Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're starting half an hour early today. I hope you're all doing well. Today it is the Grand Alliances 2v2 tournament. So if you guys haven't seen this format, one of my new favorite formats here on the channel, essentially it's a one list tournament or each team essentially has uh, two lists that they play throughout the entire format of the tournament. On top of that, we do have some new alliances today. We made some tweaks based on some feedback from the previous tournament. So you can see the various alliances here <clears throat> up at the top. You see the order side with Dwarves, Empire, Bretonian, High Elves, Elvish Union, Undead Horde, Chaos, The Great Plan. We did allow them to bring Order Tide or High Elves. So you can go Lizardmen High Elves now if you want to. Previously, it was just Lizardmen plus Order Tide, but we have made a little bit of a change there, which is quite cool. On top of that, we do have Dewan Friends, which is our newest faction. Although, strangely enough, we only had one team play them today, which is a little bit disappointing. But essentially, that's Ogre Kingdoms plus Greenskins. So you can use any of the Ogre campaign units and then the Greenskins, and that is it. I think there was only one team that did that out of like the 16 teams we have, which is pretty hog wild for sure. But uh, nonetheless, that is that. Let's get this party started. We're going to be jumping into the first game here in just a minute. Just going to let some folks gather while I go pour some water in my tea. And we'll uh, we'll get it going. I know. We're having fun. Ethan, welcome to the stream. You say it's your first one, huh? Well, this is a really fun format, so you should be in for a little bit of a treat here. Poor green skin, man. All right, I'm back from outer space with that sad look upon my face. And now we are going to be getting into the first match in just a hot minute. So it is a 2v2 tournament. These are the alliances that you're seeing here on the screen. And as far as the teams go, we can jump over and take a little look here. So the players are playing. Essentially, they're playing through the first round, and I'm going to be casting everything from beyond that. So up on the top side of the bracket, we have the probable error facing off against the Varus Academy. Terracotta Rat versus the RTK Sassy Baka. And then uh, we have Baltica 9 awaiting their opponent between Kale, Maim, Burn, which is Aerocrastic's team, I believe. And then the Council of 13, of course, is playing them. And the first game that we're going to be casting today is going to be CA Please Buff High Elves versus Super Team 1. So it should be quite a bit of fun. Very, very strong players playing today. I know we have several VM teams playing, uh, playing an RTK team. A lot of really, really powerful teams. Yeah. Sorry, I know we started a little bit early. Just a wild surprise, but uh, we're here. Oh, also, I should probably do some notifications here and let people know I'm streaming. I'm like such a potato. God, I'm so bad at this YouTube thing, man. I don't know how I've survived this long. All right, so let's go ahead and do the tag in ye old Discord. Here it is. Now. Ah, God damn it! Like just pressing the wrong buttons. Shit's just flying everywhere. All right, that looks good. And then we'll do one on ye old Twitter if I can figure out how to do that. How do I use the Twitter, honey? <laughs> all right. I think we're good. We're all set. Life is life is good. And uh, we're good to go. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, I think the Ogre team might have already been eliminated in the early rounds of the tournament, which really bums me out. I was so excited to see Ogres, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Maybe we'll get them. There might be another team. I can't... I don't have every single team memorized, so uh, they could... There could be another Ogre team. Absolutely. So, the first match of the day, let's go ahead and fire this bad boy up. Without further ado, the alliances have been set. The first is going to be a duel between the Elvish Union facing off against the Undead Horde, if I'm not mistaken. Two very strong teams, and honestly, the two teams that are playing right now could easily be teams that would be in the Grand Finals together, which is always a fun sign. So, let's go ahead and move this over here, and we can get this started. So... Taking a look here at the Elvish Union, it's going to be the Dark Lord Felcon teamed up with Killerinu. Should be quite a bit of fun. It's going to be a combination of a lot of melee elves, actually. So a lot of the White Lines of Krace backed up by Dryads. Also, a lot of, yeah, a lot of Flying Beasts. We have a Star Dragon. We have a Arcane Phoenix, a Frostheart Phoenix, just the Unholy Phoenix Alliance. And of course, the Lord here is going to be Alariel the Radiant. So that is uh, pretty much it. We'll let him know. Start when ready. Start when ready. Let's get this party started. Let's have some fun. It's going to be Tyrion on the ground. So, ooh, Tyrion is being the choice. That's a certainly interesting. One cool thing about Tyrion in 2v2 is that he's pretty durable and he's a really good hunter. And there's in 2v2, there's tons of characters to, you know, hunt down and really chase and whatnot. So, I do like the Tyrion pick quite a bit. Looks like the VM team is ready to duel. Your first time on stream. Welcome, Kona. Good to have you here. So, yes, this is Felcon and Killerinu facing off against the dreaded champions of VM. It's going to be Schwerkrasm as well as Tank, if I'm not mistaken. 
So you can see here the front battle line for the undead is going to be zombies backed up by spears. This is like a classic 2v2 combo, right? You just get Vampire Count Chaff and infantry, and then you mix in Tomb King's ranged and monsters, and usually it's a pretty good combo, honestly. It's one of the most consistent ones. Hey, Hadris, it's okay, man. I hope to, I hope to see the Dreadwa back once again. Out of curiosity, Hadri. So Hadri's was playing ogres today in today's event, in ogres and greenskins combo. How did the ogre units do? Did you find them to be a little bit of a limitation, like they were worse, or did they actually like give you a little bit of an edge in some respects of the battle? I'd be quite curious to see. So it's going to be Cetra plus Isabella von Karstein. This is like a super meta combo, right? Because Isabella can drop just the fat, thick heels on Cetra using not only Invocation, but also the Blood Chalice of Athorai. So really powerful with the big Tomb Kings characters, right? You've got these two big monsters. You have Isabella. It looks like there is a Casket of Souls back here, a Necromancer, who to Grapo, and basically just Chaff units. A very defensive undead army. It does have some Blood Knights in the back as well, so it could push up if it needs to, but overall, I think it's quite cozy. For Felcon, we do have the Star Dragon as well as the Frostheart Phoenix. We have Larry back here, and we do also have the Arcane Phoenix, and uh, looking pretty good here. Looking pretty darn good. We got Tyrion, we got a Major Metal for the Final Transmutation, and that would appear to be it for the Elvish Union. A bunch of Skirmishers and Dryads. Dryads obviously quite exceptional against both Tomb King's Infantry as well as the Vampire Count Infantry, as long as they're not Graveguard. If you're fighting like Chaff, Skeletons, like that, Crypt Ghouls, that type of stuff, it can go well. So Felcon is playing High Elves, he is leading the forces of Tyrion, and his ally is bringing Larry with Killerinu. Yes, yes. Welcome to the stream! Yes, hope you're all doing well! This is the Grand Alliances format. This is the second rendition of this tournament we've run. Last time, I believe, I can't remember who won last time, actually. I, was it an Undead Horde? I don't think so. Do you guys remember who won last time? I'm a, a little bit uh, senile right now, so please forgive me. But the Casket of Souls blasting into the White Lines. White Lines are a good generalist unit. That's what's really cool about them. Durable against missiles, like, can trade well with the most infantry in the game. So this is a tournament where you bring one list for, you know, everything basically, right? So you don't really have the opportunity to adjust your opponent's list. So you have to bring an all-comers list. It's also nice because it does reduce the amount of time uh, in the army selection, which makes it a much more engaging thing, for sure. All right, Hadri is saying we had seven ogres. One sec here. Oh, just got to minimize for a sec to adjust that. Perfect. We had seven ogres. Four of the cheap ones were solid, but we need to figure out how to play around and use the expensive ones. Yeah, yeah, I think that's kind of the consensus so far people have had. Now, a little bit of flank pressure coming in. Falcon's Reavers shooting into the Skeleton Archers on the flank, trying to get away from the strong side of the Undead Formation. White Lines advancing on all sides. It looks like the Frostheart Phoenix has been sent in. It's going to be backed up by Dryads as it does impact the Dire Pack. Now, Tank pulling in pretty quickly with Blood Knights here. Blood Knights, of course, will be kind of tar pitted by Dryads, but had they been able to get a surround on that Phoenix, that could have been some nasty damage. But I think Falcon's going to go for a big fat breath attack right now. The way he's moving the Star Dragon around the side certainly is indicative of that. Some tactical reserves in the back for Killerino. Some Reavers certainly could be helpful for dealing with these doggos. And here comes a breath attack from the dragon. One, a two, and a three. Oh, such a good breath attack. That was nasty. And the Phoenix dives as well in the backfield on the Blood Knights. And that was a nice little engagement. Now the Star Dragon and Tyrion are basically just going deep here on the big Sphinx and uh, getting quite a bit of damage as that Arcane Phoenix does swoop in as well. Oh, and the Tyrion Sunfang on the Sternsman. I don't think Tank is going to see this. Oh, brutal, brutal damage. Really good. Had that been an unarmored unit, it'd be pretty much a one-shot. So the Star Dragon trying to Tokyo drift away from the Blood Knights, which is smart. Good pullback there by Shverakrasm. He's able to get away from ye old Star Dragon. Now the dragon going to be re-engaging. Larry is also here for the heals, so the double High Elves with the healing. Certainly quite strong. I mean, uh, you can't bring duplicates of spells. We did change it in this event, so, you know, you can't have, like, double Earth Bloods and things like that. But uh, overall, it's still a very strong combo. And a massive final transmutation going in. Hits the Vampire, hits the Blood Knights. It's Isabella. That was really good. However, oh, a dangerous play here. Larry the Radiant moving in, and the Undead Pound Squad is ready to pounce. I think Killerino will react before it gets too bad. Yeah, it looks like Killerino is able to get away. Also, the living infantry of the Elvish Union are pushing through the front line pretty effectively, cutting through most of the zombies and chaff units. So it's only a matter of time before they get into the cookie jar. Granted, this big blob fight here really is the epicenter of combat and is going to be the big deciding factor here. So... Big heals going down in the Star Dragon. Uh, Earthblood plus Star of Avalorn, quite nice. Reaver is still just sitting in the back, basically taking pot shots at these skeleton archers the entire time. And a very, very scrappy fight. It looks like the Elvish Union might have found a little bit of an advantage here on the flank. It's hard to say. Dire Pack here being head, headed off by the Reaver should be able to finish those guys. And now we do have two Reavers from Felcon in the backfield, which could theoretically shut down the Ushapti Grapo. I don't think they're going to be able to shut down the Casket of Souls. 
That tank is protecting very well with the Skeleton Spearmen. The big Sphinxes did live, though. I mean, Cetra, as well as the big Papa Sphinx here, are hammering the front line. The White Lines of Krace are being pushed back, so the Undead are having a bit of a resurgence here as they start to push back the front line that was looking very, very bad for them. This flank, though, is still, you know, going well for the High Elves. We do have Tyrion. We have the Bird Squad. They're obviously able to get in here and do some nice work. And uh, well, Larry the Radiant just getting ready to drop some fat heals on whoever needs it, basically. In the backfield, Reavers hammering in. There are some Skeleton Spears. Not going to be the best engagement in the world for them, but the Blood Knights are being finished off here by the remaining ammunition of the Reaver Archers. Might be able to get some crumbling on them. A little bit hard to say. Invocation going down, 864 HP plus Resurrection. Pretty darn good. Now High Elves going in for a Gooning. Jumping in after the Shopti Grave Bow pretty heavily, but there is going to be a proportionate response coming in from the VM team. From the Super Team 1 as they do jump in and get a nice attack there on the Frostheart Phoenix. Earthblood going down. Isabella Von Karstein also jumping and hitting Tyrion in the back. And now Falcon's going to be committing some Reavers. I would imagine Isabella maybe drops a zombie summon here to like try and tarpet these guys. But so far, uh, Setra better be careful. I mean, Tyrion and the bird, that's a lot of circle beating right there. And it looks like there's going to be some more magic going down of some sort. Shield of Thorns, Narrows, Incantation, Blood Chalice of Bathori going down. Which is like a regrowth on steroids. Yeah, 36% vigor. It doesn't give perfect vigor. But uh, it does, of course, give you 2,400 HP, which is really nice. Breath attack from the Star Dragon once again on the Sphinx as the big Star Dragon looks for another opportunity. The Elves still grinding through that front line. A little bit concerning for the Undead is the fact that the White Lines of Krace, of course, on the flanks here, are going to be able to chop through the Skeleton Archers and Spearmen and different things like that. And yeah, they're eventually going to get into the Cookie Jar in the backfield. So the SEM fight really is going to be the big determining factor here. So Star Dragon's wavering. Star of Avalorn going down. Beautiful play right there. However, the big Sphinx from Shver Krasm does run in there and Karate chops the Star Dragon. That thing gets taken down or shattered at least. Yes, it is shattered. And now the Undead maybe can push back here. Cetra's still full health. Isabelle's in good shape. Looks like right here, Killerino with a very nice dive right there does get some beautiful AoE damage on the Skeleton Spearmen. Maybe clears up the way to get to that Casket of Souls, but the Undead are rallying with their Monster Squad. The Monstars, if any of you guys remember the Space Jam reference. That is some uh, old school stuff for sure. Reavers and Lions piling in, and now the Elvish Infantry have, of course, decisively won their fights in melee against the Undead Troops, which is no surprise. White Lions will easily dispatch zombies and many of those other units. Up in the sky, we do have Isabella getting a little bit hog wild, trying to duel Larry, but the Arcane Phoenix is on the hunt and should be able to hunt down Isabella pretty effectively. The Major Metal getting uh, chopped up, so both armies taking some losses. It looks like the Ushapti Summon has been used on the ground to give us a little bit of buffering. Getting that Major Metal off the battlefield quite nice. No more final transmutations to worry about. Look at this. Tank has rallied a couple Blood Knights. And will the Undead be able to grind out this Blob fight? Maybe so. Frostheart Phoenix and Larry and Tyrion, I think, have used most of their abilities. Although Sunfang, of course, is perpetual. You can keep using that as long as you just keep recharging it, which is nice. I believe it has infinite charges. Arcane Phoenix and Larry jumping over here. Maybe going to go after Isabella. Maybe the Casket. Casket still good. could do some good damage. It could still finish off a lot of these White Lines and these various other infantry units and things like that. The Tomb Kings really are holding, you know, the backbone here. Like, they have most of the power left for the Undead Force. We've got Cetra, we got the Sphinx, and... But man, Tyrion is really just showing he's got some good staying power. He is not buckling in these fights. He's going fisticuffs with the big Sphinx. Now it looks like Shvera Krasim is going to be jumping over here. The Tomb Kings player of VM jumping on Tyrion. Uh, Faint and Riposte active here. You can see 20% physical resist and really, really good combat buffs. And good micro here by Tank as well. Flying around with Isabella, making sure that nothing is for free as all the different archers just continue to blast in. I think there's only a couple archers who are about to run out of ammo. As a matter of fact, it looks like Tank might even get them with some Blood Knights back here. Close battle still. I would say the Undead maybe have a slight edge. Not Undead, excuse me, the Elves. I don't know why my brain thought that. But I think the Elves with Tyrion just kind of grinding here on the ground and also the presence of the Phoenixes is going to be kind of tough to stop. I don't know what kind of heals Isabella has left. It looks like maybe there's going to be some magic going down. Yeah, the Blood Chalice is so goddamn good. Using it on Cetra, though, interesting. Not using it on the Big Sphinx, even though it was a little bit more damage. Cetra is going to be getting that fat heal, which is going to put him up. Physical resist. A fair amount of magic here. I believe Boon of Isha is active, so this will be giving magic damage. Therefore, the physical resist buff from the Narrow's Incantation isn't going to be quite as good. So Cetra takes a big blow right there. The Big Sphinx is going to be jumping in the back, attacking the Goon Squad. The undead forces have been crumbled here in the backfield. It looks like the Necromancer is going to be releasing his last cackle into the night once again. And uh, yeah, it's quite a scrappy fight, man. Quite a scrappy fight for sure. Larry the Radiant going to be pulling back up in the sky, getting ready to charge back in as they continue to hammer down the big bird. But the undead do pull in some fourth quarter Blood Knights, which is very impactful. It looks like they're very healthy too. 28 Blood Knights. They just need to get rid of these white lines somehow. I'm not sure how they're going to do that. But if there's a zombie summon, that would probably be enough to do the trick. 
Satchar a little bit damaged here, but Blood Knights are getting Tyrion down. Tyrion's really taken a bit of a whooping. But now that the Arcane Phoenix is coming back in, let's see what else is going on with the battlefield. Looks like the Necromancer is holding his own. Ushapi Grapos should be finished here. A little bit of an AoE bombardment coming in from the big Phoenix. And Isabella von Karstein jumping in now as well and going after the Frostheart Phoenix, which is a good call. It can't, you know, rebirth. So if you get that thing off the table, that's going to be very, very nice for the Undead Forces. And now it seems like the Undead might be starting to take this one over as the Frostheart Phoenix is pushed back by the Necrotect. And the big Cetra man, still going pretty ham here, but is the Sphinx going to fall? Only 800 HP. Blood Knights are giving some nice support here. I think the Sphinx should pull back Isabella with the rear charge there. And the Undead are starting to take over in this game. It really looked like it was going to be an Elvish victory with the infantry grinding it out. But the Tomb King's characters with Isabella's healing, really, really strong. I mean, just imagine if they teamed up in the campaign map. That's some scary shit too. But Cetra getting in there. Frostheart Phoenix. Oh, that's the Arcane Phoenix. If that thing gets a rebirth, though, that could totally change the dynamic of the game. Oh, oh, and it does! That's so painful for the undead. It gets a it gets a rebirth, but it's broken. Isabella needs to chase that thing off the battlefield. But the problem is then she's busy there, and the Tomb King's characters stand alone. Tyrion does get the rebirth, but the Blood Knights on the base here have really been making all of the difference. They've just been helping to poke down these big threats. Tyrion is broken. The elves are on the run, and it looks like Super Team won is going to be claiming first blood in this absolute nail-biter of a game going about 10 minutes long, which is pretty long, although I guess it is a 2v2 tournament. So Cetra, not serving today. He is ruling with his new girlfriend, Isabella von Karstein. Isabella chasing down the Arcane Phoenix, which is extremely important. If that thing came back, he could actually potentially win the game. The elves still do have some stuff around the battlefield. I think they got some uh, white lions over here. Maybe they should take Larry and go after the Necromancer. That might actually be a good call. And Larry thinking about diving in on the big Sphinx there. Cetra is still grinding it out, and now it looks like the Elvish troops are just piling in in numbers here. We do have the White Lions coming in. Once the Arcane Phoenix... Oh no, the Arcane Phoenix came back, and now there's hope again for the Elves. Isabella is not going to be able to kill this Phoenix. No way. Okay, that changes the game completely. Wow. I think the Phoenix is quite a bit faster than Isabella, so it was able to create some distance on the retreat. So 120 compared to her 105, which is a pretty substantial difference. So there goes Cetra, piling into those units. The Blood Knights here, hammering into the Archers. I'm sure uh, the Phoenix coming back is a big moral boon here for the forces of the Elves. We still have a fair amount of troops on the ground. Two Blood Knight units. Isabella might have enough for an Invo. I also think a big overcasted invocation on the Blood Knights, which would also hit these Tomb King's characters, would probably win the game for the Undead. I wouldn't see them being able to come back at that point. But we'll see if Isabella has any magic in the bank. Honestly, I haven't seen her doing too much with, aside from the Blood Chalice and maybe the occasional zombie summon. It's a little bit hard to say. So the Blood Knights are pulling back, which is smart. You know, just let the big monsters do the talking. It looks like the Phoenix thought about getting in there. Should get an instant terror route here on these guys. Although with Larry nearby, I believe they get some sort of leadership buff. I can't remember what Boonavisha does exactly. Nonetheless, the bird does land. Cetra getting in there. And the other bird piling in, Larry the Radiant. What kind of magic does Isabella have going after the Arcane Phoenix here? And now it looks like Isabella von Karstein is going to be swooping around the back, trying to get the rear charge on the bird here, which is smart. It's at 2,000 HP. Dryad's getting in here. There needs to be some Vampiro magic. Yeah. Oh, but Cetra gets a big blow. That's super clutch. This is super clutch. So close. Here comes the White Lions. I believe they do get immune to psychology from the Boon of Isha, which is going to make it really, really tough to break these forces. 1,200. Will Cetra serve or will he rule? It looks like Cetra will rule as he crushes the Arcane Phoenix. Tyrion comes back in the fourth quarter. Very, very low as well. But the bird here is the word, and the bird appears to be crumbling down. 720 HP, 200 on Cetra. Oh my goodness, this is just a crazy game. Isabella von Karstein kind of stands alone. I mean, there are some Blood Knights and a Necrotect here. The, the balance of power is massively in the favor of the Undead, but if Isabella can't get away here and get some good cycle charging, that could be game blouses. Here comes Larry the Radiant trying to get away. Isabella is able to get Tyrion. Tyrion's at zero leadership. He does break, and army losses kicks in, and the Undead just barely win that game by the skin on their rotting teeth. Oh my god, what a match. Holy shit. That was a really crazy first match to have today. Damn, dude. Like, it was just Isabella. If they could have, like, survived the army losses, maybe. Maybe. I actually think there was a rule break on, now that I look at the armies, on Felcon and Killerino's team. I can't... They might have had one too many big SEMs, including the Great Eagle, because they had the Phoenix, the Dragon, plus the Flamespire Phoenix plus Larry on an Eagle. I think you're only allowed to have three in total per team. I can't remember the rules. It might be four. If it's four, then it's fine. But um, anyways, yeah. Tyrion, dude, guys, look at the value on Tyrion. 4,500 on your boy Tyrion there. 
Phoenixes did great. Star Dragon, not so good, 1400, but the Arcane Phoenix was very good at 3800. Phoenixes are just so much better than dragons. I love that that Elvish Union build, really good. And this is like classic undead good stuff. Like, you know, you get your boy Cetra, you get uh, Isabella with the Blood Chalice. Blood Knights are really good too. 1700 and 2700 on these Blood Knights. Dude, that was such a good game. Such a good game. Yeah, really crazy stuff. All right, so let us go ahead and jump on over to the next match. So I'm going to be joining another lobby here, and we'll keep going through today's wonderful event. For anybody getting in here, you can see these are the alliances that players are allowed to play. So they have to pick uh, basically a team within this spectrum of teams. And then from there, they uh, they build one list for the entire event. So I'm going to be upgrading this. Super Team 1 will advance in a nail-biter of a game. Dude, that was so close. Yeah, so close. Okay, one second here, my friends. Let's go ahead and find the next lobby. Uh, GG, well played. All right. And let's, uh, let's fire this bad boy up. Yeah, they're just pointing out that the, the big Sphinx was actually has fire resistance, so the Arcane Phoenix wasn't really, really doing that much damage to it. That's actually a pretty interesting tech there. So the next one we're going to be joining is going to be uh, the Council versus Baltica. They need to make a spec slot, though. I think they have one. Okay, cool. Isabella is so good in 2v2. She's really good. Like, that's that's like her format. That's where she cackles and just does good things. Yeah, very, very strong. Okay, so loading into a lobby here. We'll let the teams know we're good to go in just a hot second. We'll see if they're ready. Looks like the lobby might be a little bit bugged. We'll see if I can load in. Come on, get me there, buddy. Okay, maybe, I, maybe I'm going to have to do the dreaded force quit. We will see. Sometimes these lobbies get a little bit, little bit wild once you get going. Okay, let me just do a force quit. I'm gonna have to reboot real quick. Not my computer, but just the uh, the game. Because that lobby seems to have some problems. No problem. We'll be back in just a second with the next match. It's best of one, yeah, because the games take quite some time. So if it was best of three, this tournament would take like seven hours. It would just be insane. Yeah, so 2v2, I think best of one is good for it. If you're doing like picks and bans, you should do a best of three. But if you're just doing a single faction list, best of one is totally fine. Yeah. Because like the strategy comes into play when you, you know, build your lists essentially. Dude, that ending was super intense. Like Tyrion flying back in with like one HP. Oh my God. I really thought the elves were going to win that game based on the mid game and early game. They were really in a good position. But the uh, undead monsters, man, they were just, they were just doing so well in those monster mashes. Cetra, Cetra served. Or ruled, excuse me. I got that one backwards. Okay, let me go ahead and find another lobby here. Uh, we will do... Hold on a sec. I'm just going to go to the challenge page. Check out the matches. So next we can do... The council... Uh, we, we just tried that lobby. Let's go ahead and do Terracotta Rat versus Sussy Paka. Which is a pretty funny one. Alright. Come on, get me in that lobby. Sounds like a great way to fill seven hours. Yeah, it's a little bit like tiring though, you know? All right. So this is the Terracotta Rat. Terracotta Rat is the team name. I got to get these right. So Terracotta Rat. Terracotta Rat versus... Uh, very good. All right. Start when ready. Map is... Uh, let's go ahead and give them a map here. Gave them the map, let them know they can start when they're ready. We'll be switching over to the lobby here in just a second. Let's see if we can get the names to fit before we start the game. And I think that's fine. Very good. All right, cool. Lost control of the maps. Yeah, we don't want to do the Altar of Ultimate Darkness. Yeah. So this is going to be a Chaos Alliance with Normal Swamp and Caradoc, both members of Clan VM. Very, very powerful uh, clan for sure. Facing off against another prominent clan here in RTK, which is going to be Sassy Baka, which is uh, Jay Phoenix and Bob Tresh. Yes. Perfect. So this is going to be the Great Plan. So it's going to be Lizardmen and High Elf Alliance, which is called the Great Plan, uh, facing off against a Chaos Alliance here in this game. We'll get going from there. Why is Raise Dead so important for counts? It's literally their best spell. It's like, well, Invocation maybe arguably is better, but Raise Dead is just so strong because you can block things, you get free units. It just like it's just gives you so much utility. You can trap cavalry units, you can trap lords. 
It's very, very good. How about Empire Undivided, Empire vs. Vampire Counts? That could be an interest or and counts. That could be an interesting one. Yeah. Like the Yeah, that, that'd be interesting. You know, honestly, I don't know if we had anyone sign up with Empire today, which makes me a little bit sad as a Sigmarite. Yeah. Only one Ogre team. I really thought people would jump all over the Ogre team. Like when they were allowed to bring Ogre Kingdom units, I really thought they would jump all over that. But alas, nobody did, except one team. Yeah. And they were eliminated earlier, unfortunately. Any coast? Uh, I think there is a coast team, yeah. I think there's an undead alliance that has coast. This is only going to get better, too, when we get to the next game. And Chaos is going to get, like, all their god-specific units. We'll probably have to do, like, a Chaos Undivided. So, like, the current Chaos Alliance. And then have, like, the Pantheon of the Gods. Which is a Chaos Alliance that can bring, like, Nurgle, Corn, Zinch, like, all that stuff. Yeah. Should you cover their army? No, I don't need to cover their armies today, my friend. Because... Uh, they can only they can't change their armies. I, they sent me all their lists before the event, and uh, you know they they have to play that list the entire time. So it doesn't matter. Like doesn't matter at all. Yeah. All right. So taking a look at the forces of the RTK team, the Sussy Baka, which is uh, pretty ridiculous. Uh, it looks like it's going to be some serious Narnia action. Check this out. So we got the Lion Chariots of Crace here. We have Larry the Radiant, a Noble, plus a Phoenix up in the sky. And now for Bob Tresh, Bob, Bob is going to bring the Air Force. He's got Pterodons, some Chameleons on the ground. Oh my god, the dreaded Spirit of Tepok! Dude, the ROR Coatl is here, and it is not messing around. And uh, that's pretty much it. So yeah, the big centerpieces are Lord Chungus here on uh, the big Stego Beast. We got the Spirit of Tepok, a Skink Chief. And then for the High Elves, we have a Frostart Phoenix, Narnia Chariots, Triple Lion Chariot of Crace, mind you. Coming in here for Jay Phoenix. I believe Jay Phoenix is playing the Elves and Bob is playing the little Lizards there. I'm not sure. But nonetheless, they're going to be facing off against a very mighty VM team here in Terracotta Rat. It's going to be Sarthorial the Ever Chicken backed up by some Skaven Weapons team. So pretty classic, right? You get good quality Chaos Infantry backed up by Skaven Firepower. It's a, it's a very, very cool combo, right? And that's the coolest thing about these events is you can really uh, capitalize and, you know, spend the week scheming and trying out these 2v2 combos. There is a $50 prize for the winning team, so they can either get it through PayPal Cash or they can get it through gift cards on Ye old Steam, whatever they prefer. So Chicken, we got the Chieftain, and aside from that, it's going to be a Grace Year of Ruin for the Howling Warp Gale against... Uh, and, you know, Howling Warp Gale is a generally a good spell. Most teams probably will have some flying, Except Super Team, they didn't have any flying. But generally, I think you're going to run into some flying units in a best of one tournament. So that's good. No problem. No problem. J Phoenix went AFK for a second. We can just hang tight and enjoy each other's company. And we are all good. Yeah, this is really cool. Yep, looks like Jay is back. She is ready to go. And uh, this is going to be a party, man. Of course, we had that dual series yesterday, if you guys missed it. It was actually a best of seven between J Phoenix and Zypho. It's a very fun series. If you guys missed that, I would definitely recommend checking that out. Just kind of a standard best of seven. Hadri's hey, rooting for the rats. The master of the ogres. When the ogre kingdoms do get added eventually as a faction, they'll be teamed up with greenskins in this format. Like, the full ogre kingdoms will be there. Yeah, you could do, like, ogre kingdoms and greenskins, honestly. That would be a good alliance, because it's pretty pretty unique. Yeah. Good quality chaos infantry that you can go friendly fire with your weapon seems Exactly. You absolutely can, but the thing is, I think chaos... Is going to be like you can see Skaven slaves are going to be the front line, right? With the Marauders, there are some good Chaos Warrior infantry, but they're being kept in reserve. So the Mortar teams are going to be nuking the Skaven slaves and maybe the Chaos Marauders. They're not going to be nuking the Chaos Warriors, maybe until late game. Yeah. So we're currently playing this on the standard live build right now. I did do yesterday's event on the Cavalry beta, but today is just going to be on the live server. It's a little bit tricky when you have a big tournament to like you know get everyone on a beta. In my experience, it's possible for sure, but. I wanted to make it as easy as possible today and uh, go for the 2v2. And I mean, the Cavalry did fine last game. Those Blood Knights got like 3,000 value. So yeah, they did their thing. Skaven plus Dwarves, the Undertide. Oh my God, that'd be pretty funny. I want to keep it like, yeah, a little like from being too ridiculous in terms of the alliances. Yeah, absolutely. So check this shit out, guys. We have the dreaded Spirit of Tepok push. Oh my god, I love this. So, Sassy Vaca here, a very suspicious team, moving in at the Spirit of Tepok, hiding the Narnia Chariots, Larry, uh, you know, Big Chung is here, Lord Mazda Mundi is being hidden as well. So the only thing that the VM team here, the Terracotta Rats, see is basically just, you know, oh, although it looks like they're falling out of the aura, oh, you got to stand under the Spirit, it's the whole mini game. Yeah, 
they're really only seeing the chaff units right now. So the main epicenter of the army, like Lord Mazdamandi and the Lion Chariots, uh, should not be visible, although they just fell out of range of the Spirit of Tepok. A little bit of a miscoordination there does reveal the uh, card of the uh, team here. Oh, is there going to be a big net? This could actually be a good net for Mazda. If Mazda were to drop like an AoE net on those guys, he could have probably gotten a couple uh, potential charges on them. Who knows? So there's going to be a Howling Warp Gale. Very, very good by the Terracotta Rats. They get the Howling Warp Gale, and now the Gisales are going to be going after the Spirit of Tepok. Getting some good damage on that big beastie up in the sky. And if Chicken maybe gets in with the final transmutation as well, that could be very impactful because they're very blobbed up, right? Now, there is going to be an Earthblood going down from the forces of the Elves. It looks like Larry the Radiant is going to be dropping some heals as the Chaos Horde continues to poke and bombard the Elvish team with their uh, superior technology, which is pretty ironic. You know, they got sniper rifles, they got mortars. They're, uh, they're fighting, uh, fighting pretty advanced for their time, I suppose. But... Oh no, in an overcasted final transmut uh, transmutation going down, it hits everything, it hits the chariots, and that's the downside, I guess, of the blob formation. Oh god, it's getting, it's like full tick, all the SEMs for the elves are just getting owned. Now, what's probably going to happen here is there's going to be a Star of Avalorn coming down. It looks like the elves are going to be counter gooning, so they're moving in after the Grey Seer with pretty much everything. Larry needs to drop a star right here, because that final transmutation was just the dirtiest of the dirty. On top of that, the rest of the forces are not quite in combat yet. The SEMs are getting really, really hog wild here. It looks like the dreaded 13th spell was used here, which is a very good cast. That's going to be summoning a bunch of halberds under here, and the halberds will be able to bump and grind and shank down some of the larger targets like the lion chariots, which are kind of getting wrecked. Honestly, it looks like terracotta rats are in a very dominant position. The final transmutation, they basically have the entire value of the enemy army just like pinned in here, and they're just getting bombarded by like Gisales and mortars. And just all sorts of nasty shit. Oh my god, it's just absolute disaster right now. As the balance of power really starts to go in the favor here of the forces of the Terracotta Rats of VM here. So, Spirit of Tepok on the run. Shield of Thorns gives it a little bit of physical resist. Uh, Larry still trying to fight in here, actually, with her Phoenix as well as the Noble. Lion Chariot's moving back in. It looks like they're going in for round two. Like, it ain't over. It ain't over. Moving back in and getting into that Star of Avalorn. Should be able to get some nice heals on these units. But are they really just going to try and bunker bust this one position? I mean, looks like they finally do. And they do get the Chieftain. Could this be the comeback for the Great Plan Alliance? We'll certainly have to find out. Now, Mortars continuing to bombard here on Spearmen. And in the backfield, some good harass. Pterodon Riders diving in on Gisales, but being compromised by the Ogres. And the Reaver is still trying to get around, but good defense here by Karadok, as well as his teammate Normal Swamp, able to hunt down the Reaver archers and uh, pursue them quite efficiently with Chaos Warhounds as well as Ogres. Now, the Elves here kind of starting to do okay. The Rat Ogres getting a little bit worn down. Here you can see Big Chickens beat up as well, but my concern here is that Karadok is going to be getting another big transmutation here on this blob, right? Which is going to be very, very nasty. Chaos Warriors being sent in from both sides to buffer and really keep this blob of Elven and Lizard units from advancing. And how is the backfield disruption going? Honestly, it looks like it's a very, very strong defense here from the Terracotta Rats. Able to hold back most of these skirmishing units and like the Pterodon Riders just getting focused down by the Marauder Horsemen. The Reavers being hunted down by Hounds and Ogres. The Gisales and, you know, Mortar teams are basically getting their maximum value. And if those Mortars are allowed to just go balls deep... They're going to kill pretty much all the good Chaos Infantry, like any of these things like Chaos Warriors, Great Weapons, whatever. Or not Chaos Infantry, excuse me, Elvish Infantry. Sorry, the brain's just all over the place, but it's uh, it's going to be a tough one for them. Balance of Power still isn't point of no return. The Chieftain of the Lizards uh, does get focused down by the two Gisales right there. And now the Grey Seer has piled in himself to fight. They're really, really committing to this blob strategy. This is like, yeah, no mercy here. Oh, big chicken. Oh, we got the bird duel. Check this out. We got the spirit of Tepok battling the mighty Warp Chicken. Just the haggard animations galore. But it looks like the spirit of Tepok is going to be focused down by the Gisales, being sniped in the back by the uh, untrustworthy Skaven. And the spirit of Tepok has fallen, and another final transmutation comes in. That's probably going to be the death knell here for the uh, Great Plan Alliance, as they do get just absolutely hammered by that final transmutation. Nasty, nasty stuff. So Lord Mazda Mundi. Still grinding it out. Larry's still in there, but the elves really don't have much left. I mean, if you look around the battlefield, they've pretty much been completely routed everywhere else by the mortar teams, uh, and their SEMs are just getting focused by Gisales. I would wager those Gisales are rocking like 2,000 value plus on each of those guys. So Lord Mazda getting that earth blood, making him a little bit tanky. A nice Star of Avalorn going to be healing up this force. We will certainly see 
But that is going to be probably game blouses, as it's only a matter of time before the Skaven and Chaos Alliance are able to grind them down. I mean, I'm trying to think of some weird circumstance in which they might not. I mean, what do they have left in terms of infantry? It's really nothing. It's actually just SEMs. Yeah, so it's Lord Maz the Mundy here who's actually wavering. We have a Frostheart Phoenix and uh, a Noble and Larry. I think that's a, literally it for the entire army. A couple of routing units around the map. We got some Lion Chariots running for the hills. Uh, aside from that, I guess the Great Plan does have some Feral Cold Ones and Chameleon Skinks that are coming back here. Uh, looks like players are saying good luck, have fun, which is always a good sign. And Maz the Mundy's broken. With Maz the being broken, Larry isn't going to survive long in the pits. She is being uh, surrounded. This is like some end time shit right here. Just the Chaos Alliance just taking out the heroes of the old world as you can see Mazda's on the run. Larry's going to be circle beaten by Chaos Warriors and Ogres. The Frostheart Phoenix will take some time to kill. They're pretty damn tanky. Um, the Noble's relatively tanky too with 100 armor and 70 melee defense there, but uh, that ain't going to be enough. Lord Mazda Mundi is on the run. Good night, sweet prince. You will be missed. Here comes the Marauder Horseman moving in, going after the Skink Cohorts. Is there going to be a final transmutation once again? Usually you can you can get like two overcasted ones or sometimes one overcasted and two basic ones. It really depends on how long the game goes and how well you manage your wins of magic. But um, yeah, we'll see if there's another one. I don't think it's going to be necessary though. Big Bird's coming in. He's going to be probably just getting his pimp cane and going after Larry here, I would imagine. Lord Mazda Muddy running. Going to be corralled by Marauder Horseman. Should be able to take him out, which will even further the army losses. And that appears to be a victory here for the VM team, for the Terracotta Rats. Claiming victory for the Under Empire with a little assistance from the, uh, you know, the Chaos Infantry, which is pretty cool, and the Big Chicken. GG, well played. That was a good game, huh? Solid scrap there. Thank you all for joining today in today's Grand Alliances Tournament. Hey, darling. Thanks. And that was a nice eight-minute battle. So with that, another uh, Chaos Faction does advance, although the first one, I suppose, was undead. So let's go ahead and take a look at the breakdown here. Here we can see the Gisales and Weapons teams. 944 and 814. I was really wrong about the Gisales, I guess. Although these ones got 1500. Mortars did pretty good. Standard value. Nothing like crazy. Warp Chicken went pretty apeshit, though. The big final transmutation might have actually been the backbreaker. Because that like nuked all the chariots, which would have actually been kind of hard for the other team to kill. I think the chariots should have been off on the flanks like fighting instead of fighting in the blob. I really do think the Sussy Vodka team could have won. I just think the blob fight like against the final transmutation was just so nasty. Yeah, Lion Chariots still got some good value despite getting nuked. So a good attempt there. Very well played. So now we will switch over and update ye old bracket. So let's go ahead and show you guys what that looks like here. So the Terracotta Rats will be advancing on and we will be jumping into another lobby right now. So for anyone who's new to the format, here's a little bit of a teaser of the alliances. So basically the teams can choose from these alliances and do their business there. Yes, yes. All right, so let's go find the next match for the day and see who we shall be casting. I love this event. This event is so much fun. I want to play in this one, you know? I want to play. Cool. So this next one is going to be a duel between, I believe, Probable Error is one of the teams. I have to see who they're facing. Ah, uh, yes, against, uh, I believe, one of the Vampiro teams. Yeah, against the Varus Academy, so... Let's go ahead and update this. So this is going to be Probable Error error versus Varus Academy. Some very, very strong teams here. And we can show you guys the brackets real quick. So let's go ahead and switch on over to the web browser. So currently, this is going to be the top side. This is the Probable Error versus the Varus Academy. The winner of this will be facing the Terracotta Rats. And then we'll do the Council 13 versus Baltica 9. We'll be facing the Super Team who is awaiting in the semifinals of the tournament. And then, of course, we'll get to the grand finals and see how that all goes. So let's get into this game and uh, do it to it. All right, start when ready. So this looks like it's going to be a Chaos Alliance. So it's going to be a Chaos Alliance facing off against an Undead Alliance. Very, very nasty Undead team. Some very, very good uh, Undead mains that I'm seeing being played there. So let's go ahead and switch back. Looks like that fits well enough. I need to update my brackets or my, my kind of cues at the top. I don't really have one for the 2v2 event. But we can see the teams. It's going to be a Private Eye and Perfect Escargo here facing off against Lunacy and Void Laws. Now, these are two players who we've often seen in the grand finals of tournaments. Uh, map is going to be... Uh, let's go ahead and do the, the prog. Go ahead and switch, please. They'll be on prog for the map. Looks good. Man, look how quick he was able to switch that map. So yeah, I don't need to hide the armies because everybody already, like the lists aren't changing, so it doesn't really matter too much. 
All right, all right. Thank you again for joining. Let us carry on and see how this will go. It seems like the Undead and Chaos Alliances are very popular today. Although in other 2v2 tournaments, the most popular is usually like Bretonia, like Dwarves. Like those are very common. Although today we didn't really see them. We didn't really see them. <laughs> KFC chicken, chicken says, I wondered what would break first, your spirit or your body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he was pretty scary. Yeah, Norska, maybe Norska should be with green skins. Like, it can be added into their alliance. Just to kind of entice people to play them. Granted, nobody really plays Norska that often, so... Yeah, Norsk Norska, unfortunately, is just neglected and sad in the shadows. It's just the way of things, man. Yeah, it's just the way of things. Do you think they will add uh, Nagash? If you think, Yeah, I think they'll add him. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know how they're going to implement him. I honestly have no idea. Um, probably just add him to an existing faction. I don't know. I really don't know. But yeah, he's going to be probably a major part of Game 3. At some point, Like once they get off the hype train of Chaos and kind of calm down there, I'm sure they will have like a big kind of Nagash party. Like, he's such a staple, right? Like, so it's got to happen. All right, so taking a look here at the forces of the Undead Horde, it's going to be a defensive build. Uh, looks like it. Triple U Shopti Grapo. Uh, we have, I believe, Isabella. Yeah, so it's going to be Isabella again. I, I think that's really proven to be the strongest combo here uh, for the Undead Horde. Facing off against Cetra the Imperishable. Double White Kings. We do also have a Tomb Prince on the ground. So yeah, very similar to what we saw, which is pretty funny because I believe Super Team is a VM team as well. We have three teams playing from the VM clan today, and I believe two of them are undead and one of them is Chaos. But um, the two teams that we're seeing that are both playing the undead hordes from VM are very similar. It's like Cetra, Isabella, Shopty Grapos, like undead chaff with like uh, Black Knights in this army, actually, and some Blood Knights, I would imagine, on the flanks. But very, very similar styles of play. And maybe they were scheming their armies this week. Who knows? Who knows? Now, if we take a look here at the PE team, let's see what these bad boys got going. The probable error... We have the Exalt. Is that what that stands for? Oh, that's pretty cool. I never knew what their clan standing for there. That's neat. So we've got the perfect Escargo. we got the double Skaven Assassins with the Grey Seer of Ruin. And what else do we got? Big Chicken. Okay, Big Chicken is strong. I mean, again, Undead love to blob. It's their favorite shit to do. So if the perfect Escargo can actually catch the big Undead, you know, character blob in a tight position, that can, you know, just straight up win them the game depending on their execution. So, wow, is this Forsaken too? Holy shit, look at all the Forsaken. And aspiring champions in the front line coming in from these bad boys. Man, what a what a wild front line. Forsaken, of course, can mulch undead troops, but they are a little bit squishy. Low HP, comparatively. I think Forsaken have 5,500 compared to, like, you know, zombies who have 7,500, right? So they're a little bit squishy. Low model count and uh, glass cannons with very low melee defense. But this is uh, very exciting. Yeah, three to five VM teams. Yeah. I think there's three. Maybe there's, there's, there, there's more? Yeah, who knows? I want to play in this event though. If, if you're if you're a YouTuber and you're watching, please host the similar format so I can so I can play in it. Although I guess I could play in my own, but yeah, I don't know. It's kind of haggard. So the battle is soon to be underway. Looks like the PE team is ready. The probable error and the undead horde awaits. Void lols here with all of the Zushapti Grapos. We also have Setra the Imperishable, the Grave Guard, the classic undead. Cackling Isabella in the sky, really proving to be a valuable piece in the 2v2 meta. We'll see how the aspiring champions do. Maybe they will encourage their fellow rats to fight longer. The dreaded combo of the gods. Skaven slaves teamed up with aspiring champions. What could you possibly do to stop encouraged Skaven slaves? Right? You know, the aspiring champs are petting them on the back and, you know, telling them nice things. So, Giselle's going to be opening up onto the Ushapti Grapo, which is a good call. Giselle's will outtrade them, especially the Natty Bubos, but... They need to make sure to protect them. I would imagine that the enemy team will send something back there to hunt them down. One of the Ushapti Great Bows already falls. Pretty nice little start there. Looks like the Great Bows are going to be going after the Ogres, which is good. Without the Ogres, the Skeleton Chariots can really just run rampant in this army here. So they need to definitely respect those Chariots too. And some of the Ogres might have to be sacrificed to the Great Bows to make sure those Chariots don't just run rampant. But the Forsaken Rush is in full effect. Zombies are being sent in. And the Chaff of the Vampires, of course, will be taking the initial beating. I'm really curious to see how well the Forsaken will be doing. Wolf Rats are moving around the flank with the Marauder Horsemen. Probably looking to get in here and overwhelm the... You know, the, uh, it's going to be hard. I mean, Blood Knights and Akar Horsemen should be able to dominate most of those like skirmishing type units. Here, the Grey Seer of Rune getting popped in the face by the Ushapti Grape. Oh, I would imagine we will see a dreaded 13th spell here in a hot moment. The Globideers also moving up. Going to be doing a little bit of friendly fire damage going after zombies, but that'll probably end up doing more damage than it's worth. 
In the flanks, we have horsemen and chariots taking a very wide circuitous route, actually chasing down the skirmishers here of the PE team, which probably is not worth it. Probably going to be taking some casualties there. Now, in the center of combat, Forsaken getting absolutely cut to pieces by Cetra as well as the Tomb Prince. In the meantime, the Nekar Horseman able to fend off the Hound units of the PE team. And is Big Chicken going to be dropping a final transmutation? He does, and that's pretty good. I believe that was overcasted. It does hit both of the White Kings, but Lunacy, of course, being a very savvy player, able to split those units. So overall, that final transmutation wasn't that great. It just basically hit one White King, did a little bit of damage to this one, but it's still damage at the end of the day, but nothing terribly concerning. Forsaken getting through, you know, where they need to, chopping through some of the infantry units. Looks like a Scorch going down there. In the backfield, we do have some harass as the Vampiric Felbats of Lunacy do jump in, but are immediately torn apart by the Ogres and Aspiring Champions. So the Gisales and Globadir teams still moving forward. we got a pretty close game in our hands. Blood Knights, though, here get a beautiful charge. Lunacy uh, able to get the Blood Knights right on top of the Marauder Horsemen, and they immediately take massive casualties and are forced back. 22 models. But look at this. The Demon's View has gotten on top of the Great Bows as well, but they are being protected by Graveguard Great Weapons. The Graveguard will be able to decisively defeat Forsaken, typically, because they have such good armor and their bonus for his infantry. And now Forsaken are being pulled in from reserve here by the PE team to attack the Blood Knights, which is okay. Blood Knights aren't great against, you know, armored infantry, really, so we'll see how that goes. Grayseer here, though, in the danger zone, overextending very, very heavily. Um, Private Eye needs to get back right now. I mean, Setra plus the two White Kings are just going balls deep right here and taking out this Grayseer. And there's not really any support from the Chaos Alliance to help this character. I mean, this would be the time that if the Big Chicken were to get, like, a big final transmutation right here, that would be, like, a potentially game-winning play, right? But the Big Chicken did use it earlier, and it was overcasted, so there's not going to be another one for quite some time. So Warp Chicken in the backfield trying to deal with the Chariots. Uh, the Aspiring Champions have some okay mass, and they're trying their best to get rid of the Skeleton Chariots as well. But honestly, it looks like the Undead Horde is uh, slowly taking over this game. Granted, Chaos is overwhelming many of their positions, just swarming in with troops. And uh, But the Graveguard Great Weapons have now been pulled from the back lines and are starting to get some cost-effective trades here in the fight. Uh, Renee asks, are there any Greenskin factions this time around? Yes, but they were eliminated earlier in the tournament, unfortunately. So the Great Wad did not make it, which... Yeah, I was hoping to see. I was hoping to see at least a couple. We had what I think sixteen teams playing today, and uh, I'm only casting the top eight. But uh, the Greenskins were eliminated earlier, so the Undead Horde now noticeably taking an advantage in the balance of power. The Forsaken seem to have done all right. I'm really curious about their their value, but it's a little bit unfortunate for them because they really just have skeletons and just like zombies to fight. So they might not be able to really get that juicy punch. Although they are good against those units, so it's hard to say. I mean, but we still have uh, Blood Knights just reaving in the backfield. It looks like the Ushapti Great Bows for Void Lulls and, uh, and Lunacy have been kept alive here. It looks like there's going to be an Ushapti Summon getting dropped in the backfield. I'm not sure about that Ushapti Great Bow Summon back there, but nonetheless, it's uh, sending a message, getting them closer to army losses. Here we do get an Exalted Hero of Chaos jumping in, going after Setra the Imperishable as well as the Tomb Prince. And the Exalted Hero immediately just pounded by these two characters. Setra is a pretty good duelist, especially with his buffs active. And the Tomb Prince is no joke either. Now bouncing in, going after the Big Chicken, who might be responding with one last uh, Zinch trick here. He's, you know, he's not like the the Keeper, not the Keeper of Secrets, but the uh, the Changer of Ways. What are they called again? Like the Big Birds? God damn. You have the Keeper of Secrets, which is which is the Slanesh one, right? Lord of Change. God damn. God damn. But uh, yeah. Not, not as cool as the one in the trailer that we saw for Cathay, but he's trying his best. He's, he's, he's the Walmart version. At this point, it's just cleanup. The Undead are just going to be hunting down the remnants of the forces. And the Gisales here did pretty good. They were able to get good steady value over the course of the whole game for sure. And yeah, 800 value, not bad, I guess. And if they were able to unleash their full payload, it would probably be quite a bit more. But Chariot's running them over. Army loss is kicking in. It looks like Lunacy and Void Lulls will be advancing on. Hey, Zoro, I know it's not Age of Empires 4, but unfortunately, I cannot cover that game now because... Uh, that was a beta test, and it's over now. So we all have to suffer and wait. I am just fiending for some Age of Empires 4 gameplay. Yeah, Lord of Change. Andy, thank you, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate that indeed. GG, well played. Very, very strong undead combination. I think, like, the Bretonian and Dwarves would actually have a really good matchup against it. Like, if you just brought, like, a couple cannons with, like, Fane Enchantress and, like, Goon Squads. I feel like Bretonian Dwarves would be one of the best answers to this. But uh, I don't think anybody signed up with them today, which is strange. Yeah, that was Kairos. I'll never not call Kairos. Yeah, Kairos is a... He, he is the he is the evolved chicken. He is the ascended chicken. What is still fighting here, by the way? Oh, man. Army losses hasn't kicked in yet. Looks like the last of the uh, forces here going in after the assassin. Stone Trolls? How would Stone Trolls do in this matchup, you ask? Uh, they would be okay against Undead. I mean, they, they against the Tomb Kings, they have the Missile Resist, which is kind of cute. 
Yes, the dreaded Void Lols and Lunacy, a very, very powerful team of players claiming victory here this day. Certainly a chance that they could be facing one of their clan mates in the later stages of the event. They uh, are several VM teams. I always like, you know, when their tournament's going on, I always like take a look at all the discords because I'm in most of the clan discords and I just like see like, yeah, they and they're all like training, ready to go. It's, it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, Boris, me too, man, me too. All right. Sarth and the Grace here. Yeah, KFC chicken and the Taco Bell. The Taco Bell, that's fun. I like that Optimus Pine. That's fun. I know, it's going to be a long month, David. So, yeah, cool build. I mean, I love the Forsaken Rush, dude. That's that's some super cool shit. I feel like Chaos Gaben is a really nice combo. I mean, maybe if they had more weapons teams. Like, if Private Eye had, like, three or four Gisales, I feel like they really could have punished that army from a distance and forced them to come in. Because having to advance on, like, Void and Lunacy while they're just, like, punishing you with Chariots and Ushapi Great Bows is pretty damn rough. So, let us go ahead and update the bracket. So, we'll be switching on over to ye old web browser as we get ready for the next match. There we are. So, the probable... Oh, they already did it for me. Great. These guys are on point here. So, we have Varus Academy versus Terracotta Rat, which is going to be a, a, the same match we just saw, but different armies, obviously. And then we have the Council of 13 facing off against Baltica 9 to face Super Team here. I'm not sure what the compositions are for these fine gentlemen but we're about to find out so let's go back to the alliances screen while we get this next match going thank you again uh falcon's team did play but they were eliminated earlier they were please buff high elves and they, the high elves lost pretty funny yeah unlikely alliances oh my god i actually prefer this yeah i prefer this but i see the appeal because unlikely alliances is just a normal 2v2 tournament people just like you know uh mix and match there so Hey guys, map is going to be, um, what map do we want to do? Let's go ahead and do one second. We can do, uh, did we do go Iron, Iron Sand Desert. And start when ready. All right, seems like there is no lag in this lobby, which is good. Let's go ahead and set up the team names. So it is going to be uh, Council of we'll do we'll just kind of abbreviate it a little bit so it actually fits let's switch on over and we're all set all right so next up we have an undead alliance facing off against an elvish union the elvish union is going to be wood elves and uh dark elves if i'm not mistaken now i actually remember this team because they did some really cool shit in one of the previous tournaments really really cool stuff david dude i'm addicted to age of empires 4 too god i want to play it so bad it's terrible yeah it's it's really good i know there's you know people there people have their criticisms but honestly i feel like it's a pretty damn good game like i haven't been like hooked on a game like that in quite some time i mean outside of total war warhammer obviously which is pretty much my life but uh you know that got the trick although lately i've been playing uh been playing a little bit of league of legends i've been playing some uh warcraft 3 obviously on my own time yeah so my wife plays League. She's she's very solid. So we've been playing uh, some bot lane actually. I play Draven and she plays uh, she plays Leona and we just dunk on people. I think the last game we both got like S and we're like seventeen and one or something. It was awesome. Of course we lose sometimes as well, but that was our last game. The Hobo Alliance, every Horde faction. Yeah, that's pretty fun. I like that. All right, so let's take a look now. These guys are one of my favorite teams, Baltica Nine. I have a sweet spot in my my heart for them because they bring like just like rush builds with like cool units last time this was the team if you guys watched the last grand alliance tournament that brought like mass sisters of slaughter and like witch elves and shit and just in like the blade singers and just rushed it was like the coolest shit ever Spandol, thank you for the fiber all hail the skaven they skitter from the jeep oh, okay <laughs> all hail the skaven they skitter from the jeep with haggard tails and incredible flails <laughs> they're here to eat your cheese dude that's so good man Schmandolf. nice dude yeah that's awesome, man. I love it. Dude, Schmandolf, killing it. I feel like I should hire someone to do like a, re a remake of that. Yes. Lady Turn and I, we crushed all foes. She just lands lands her snares and, and then I just come in and we, we do the party. Yeah, Dra Draven is Draven is my probably my best character, yeah. Draven, Darius, uh, I can't remember who else I played. I was pretty okay at Jace and uh, I play Garen for the laughs, but you know, he's, he's a bit of a memer. All right, so taking a look here at ye old Baltica 9. It's going to be a spear front line backed up by Glade Guard Spam. So it's going to be a bunch of Starfire Shafts. We do have Witch Elves. We got Shades as well, so throwing some sick shade. We got Marathi. 
The Sisters of Twilight. Man, I love this army. A lot of cool units. A lot of cool units for sure. Hey, Green Maws. Thank you for the 1172. A tenor for the Woodies. Green Maws, thank you so much for your donation. Really appreciate it. And uh, you're also a member, so thank you for that as well, man. So taking a look here at Ye old Forces of the Undead. Honestly... We got Isabella and Setcher again. So clearly the, the word has gotten out that this is a very strong combo. I think a lot of people watched the previous tournament and saw how good it was. Now, I don't think it's like super overpowered. I think it can be beaten. But of course, it's a very fluid, easy to execute combo in my opinion. So honestly, yeah, it's like Blood Knights. Blood Knights in the back, backed up by Ushapu Grapos. This build is a little bit different from the other ones we've seen because the EC team here, uh, the Council of 13, did also bring a Bone Giant. Yeah. So that's that's it. Yes. Let us know your predictions in chat. Are you rooting for Baltica 9 or the dreaded Council 13 who is not playing Skaven? Very strange, but not going to ask any questions today. Good luck to these two fine teams. Thank you to all the players who are playing today. It's been a very fun event so far. Good luck. Have fun. Yes, yes. It is time. It is time. This is an amazing game. Yeah, the deal... It, it's certainly a little bit... There's a lot of DLC to get, but honestly, if you're looking to just play multiplayer, like, just... Find three factions you like and just like get their DLCs and then you're fine. You know, it won't cost you too much to just do that. In this format, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's OP. Yeah. Yeah. Isabella is really, really good in this format, which I think is good because like that's the cool thing about the format. It's like normally there's these characters you never see. Oh, with a giant shaft almost in the face of the spell singer, but she's able to dodge it or not dodge it, but it missed the bone giant, not the most accurate of fellows. Here comes the Elvish Union screaming forward. I actually think they have a really good combo against this undead army. I think that the Glade Guard spam is going to be very tough to deal with as long as they don't get sniped by that Boner Giant right there. Here it looks like Grave Fertilizer getting caught with a couple of shafts to the face. The Sisters of Twilight getting on the wings looking to get some breath attacks. And now the Elven forces will be getting into the front line. Oh man, you got to watch that caster. Grave Fertilizer, you need to watch that Spell Singer. Oh God, it's taking so much damage for free. And that's going to get rid of the healing for the team. Because, like, he Dark Elves don't have healing, right? So that's so useful for them. I just don't think he notices this. Oh, Anakin, I'm too weak. Oh, no. Not like this. And the Spell Singer is Karate Chopped. Now, thankfully, the AI will be microing it out of range of the Bone Giant. So it should be able to come back later and do something. Very, very unfortunate start there, though, for the forces of Baltica 9. Shades with dual weapons. Shooting into Skeleton Archers. Not a very cost-effective trade. Skeleton Archers will get some good damage back, though. The Shades will win. Uh, in terms of a trade, it's not the best. Now we got Spears against Zombies. Of course, the Spears will eventually win. Shades are moving up, and the Glade Guard also need to move up. And now it looks like Grave Fertilizer has noticed that the Spell Singer of Life is back, and he's pulling it around the far side of the map and looking to kind of get in a good position. Now Shades and Sisters getting ready to hammer down the flank here. I think the Sisters need to get a little bit more engaged. Marathi being focused down by Grapos, but should be able to juke it. So Wisp pulls back up in the sky. I would imagine a Soul Stealer could be active here in a minute. The elves will eventually get through, and they probably need to move up the Glade Guard and make sure to not use ammo on Skeleton Spearmen and to save that ammunition for the Bone Giants and for some of the Ushapti Great Bows and Blood Knights and things like that. So, elves still pressing up. Which elves may be going to be piling in, but Skeleton Archers doing some really good work. It looks like these sisters kind of just flying overhead, not sure where they're going to be going exactly. But Shades, I think, are trying to get on top of the Grave Guard here. You can see the Shades moving up very, very rapidly. Now, of course, the Undead front line will eventually buckle to the Elven front line. It's mostly just Chaff, although King Nikesh's Scorpion Legion seems to be holding pretty well. The Sisters of Twilight up in the sky looking for some of them goods. Is this going to be an Undead top four? It very, very well could be. It'd be pretty funny if they're all like the same combos and different things like that. We will see. Because in the last one we had, the Undead did well, but they also uh, were having trouble with Dwarves and Bretonians. Like, that was a really good combo, but nobody signed up with those today. So I think that's why the Undead are having such a good run today. Is I, th I feel like people didn't sign up with the usual factions that are really good against them in 2v2. Like, Dwarven Cannon positions with, like, Bretonian Chaff and uh, Paladins and Fae Enchantress are so good against the Undead. But we're just not seeing those today. Anyways, this battle is still very, very even. The Glade Guard Starfire Shafts are getting ready to party. It looks like Blood Knights are going to be battling against the Wild Hunters of Kurnus with the Sisters of Singing Doom there, but the Blood Knights get a far better charge. However, there could be some counterfire coming in if Grave Fertilizer is able to get his Glade Guard on top of those ranged pieces. Man, those Wild Hunters of Kurnus are just getting destroyed right there. Oh man, just getting some, some random spam call there. God, I always forget to silence my phone before the streams. But it does look like the Undead team is pulling ahead here. I, I feel like... Uh, 
I feel like the elves are taking a lot of damage on many fronts. And the, the archers really have only been shooting at mostly chaff units at this point. Here on the flank, we have like Coldwind Knights looking to uh, engage maybe against Blood Knights with Marathi. I mean, a big Soul Stealer plus like Shades and Witch Elves could make this a good fight. And he's actually going to go in for it, which is very ballsy. Blood Knights will do well there, but there needs to be a Soul Stealer like ASAP or else this is just going to be a disaster. Now, Marathi does lower the melee attack of these units down to 20. That is the case. Last time the Undead did beat Bretonia. Yeah, it was it was a close match. I think that came down to like just play and execution, but I do think Bretonia and Dwarves are pretty good there. Ooh, a big pit of shades coming down from Marathi. That does do some considerable damage against the Tomb Guard Halberds here, and the Blood Knights are Rampage, so this is a, a good little engagement for the Elves, potentially, as they do get through there. The Glade Guard with the Starfire Shaft still shooting. Sisters of Slaughter probably need to get a little bit more active. I feel like they could be back here punishing, maybe shutting down some of the Ushapi Grapos. Maybe they're just flying over and trying to finish off the Blood Knights with their ranged attacks. Nonetheless, the Undead have broken through the flanks. The Shades are now going to be attacked by Doggos, and many of the Archer units are probably going to be following in suit shortly. The Archer's doing okay damage against Blood Knights. Blood Knights do have that 22% missile resist while they are not in combat from the Flag of Red Keep. We'll see if the Archers can finish them. Ushapti Summon being used in the backfield here as well. And I believe this Bellsinger, yeah, I think she's gone, which is... Pretty unfortunate. How's this fight going? Blood Knights should be going down here to the Witch Elves as they are rampaged, and the Shades are dropping some nice supporting fire. Marathi trying her best to free up the Shades here by finishing off those units. Now there are Dryads and Witch Elves moving into the back line, and this is where the Elves can get back in the game. We have some Eternal Guard back here. If the Witch Elves can actually rampage these who shop you great bow, they're just going to die, like straight up. These Dryads probably need to come across and jump on top of the Skeleton Archers to keep them from killing the Witch Elves and various units. But yeah, great bows and various units in the backfield are in a little bit of trouble. It looks like the mighty Sister of Twilight going to be sitting up in the sky shooting at Setra, which is certainly a good choice. And still no Rampage on the Great Bows. I believe they have to be below like 80% for that to happen. And now the Witch Elves are going to be jumping over after the other Ushapi Great Bows, while other Witch Elves shall be getting a nice charge into the back of the Skeletons. And honestly, 26 Witch Elves probably can defeat 84 Skeleton Archers. But not if the Undead Heroes have something to say about it. So here comes Setra. Here comes Isabella jumping in, trying to uh, shut him down. These uh, Witch Elves, which from a distance look like Cairn Race for some reason. Yeah, look how ridiculous they look at a distance. It's so funny. Uh, will they be able to Rampage the Chosen of the Gods? Maybe. Witch Elves are pretty fast. Yep, and they do get the Rampage, which is very, very strong for them. Here, these Ushapi Great Bow are also being crumped down. Could there be a comeback for the Elves? In the backfield, Blood Knights finally being corralled and finished off by Marathi and the Sisters of Twilight. But not before they're able to rout many of the Archers. But you can see the Mounts of Power is kind of pulling back. If that spell, if that spell singer was still alive, that would be so useful. Marathi, as well as the sisters, really, really would love that healing right now. Great bows partially compromised. I mean, these ones did get shut down for a moment, but it looks like they're going to be fine and will come back. And uh, these great bows are being chased down by Eternal Guard. So with proper micro here, I think that Crow Pep should be able to get those guys away and will be okay. Shades fighting in combat, defeating skeleton spears and zombies, which is pretty funny. And the Elves have rallied a, a considerable force. And I mean, they're not weak. Bounce Power actually almost pulls back to like dead even at this point. Man, this is some uh, some really, really close stuff. Yeah, the Sisters of Twilight getting in there, cleaning up stuff with Marathi. We, uh, Marathi, we have girl power here. We have the Sisters plus Marathi. Should be able to finish off these Grave Guard too with like a breath attack or just, you know, kind of stretching them out using the dragons and characters. And then, I mean, Sisters plus Marathi might be able to beat the undead characters, depending on their magic and uh, various other tools they have. But, I mean, Sisters of Twilight could basically, once they clean up the Grave Guard on the ground, could go over here and just start dropping pot shots on Isabella, which would be the choice. I think you just got to smash those guys for sure. Some more shots coming in. Grave Guard crumbling down. Archer's still pulling back and now getting some nice crossfire. Neither side really has a lot left. It's pretty much bare bones here. Shade's getting a nice engagement, though, dropping some solid armor-piercing shots into the Ushapti. Which, if they could finish off the Ushapti here, that'd be really, really strong. Got yeah, more fire going into the Ushapti. I still think they will probably lose because their model count is so low. Ushapti might even decide to pile in. Although, we do get some Eternal Guard that are going to be pr pursuing them from the flanks here. So, Marathi plus... Uh, is Not Isabella, but the Sisters of Twilight now going after Isabella von Karstein here. Okay, interesting. This could be a good gooning. No snares available. Looks like the first attack does miss, and Isabella does use a zombie summon, which is a good wins of magic bait because... That zombie summon really isn't going to do anything. And okay, they might be able to get... If they get a couple more attacks here... Look at the Narrow's Incantation of Protection going down from Setra, protecting his girlfriend here. Isabella does get the 40% ward safe. And now, I think Rathi plus the sister is probably going to want to get back. Although that dragon did get some good attacks there in the uh, second volley. Shades are out of ammo. The forces of the elves do have a fair amount of units on the back of the map. But most of them are very low on ammo. So I think it's just going to come down to a little bit of hero hammer here. Shades moving into combat against Skeleton Archers. Isabella counterfighting now. Honestly, maybe... Ooh, did she just get friendly fired by that Bone Giant? Maybe a little bit. But yeah, man. See, that's the thing. Losing that, that healer early for the Elves 
like disastrous. Like if there was an earth, like a regrowth right now, like the sisters might be able to just kill Isabella. But without that, it's gonna be a problem. Oh, a giant shaft and the sisters get broken. But Marathi's getting in there and getting some good work in. Blood Chalice of Bathora is forced to be used here on Isabella. But yeah, just a little bit of a mistake. I, I think if they had kept their healer alive, they could be in this game right now. Like a big fat couple heals on sisters could get them back in the game. And they just got the Blood Chalice out like, just little, little mistakes like that, I think, have forced him out of the battle, whereas the Undead uh, army hasn't really made as many mistakes. So that's probably going to be clean up here. I think the Undead Horde will be able to punish. The Glade Guard Starfire Shafts are on the run. And the Sisters of Twilight have returned from the Shadows. Could there be a fourth quarter comeback? Is Marathi still fighting? It looks like she is. Still battling Isabella, but going to be pulling back at this point. We got Dryad still fighting here. Some Spears. Ushapti Grapeo Fire going in. I think these shades need to be used from Wisp to maybe go after the Ushapti Grapeos if they can. Sisters have some really good ammo too. Like if the Elves want to stretch this game out, they certainly can. They don't have to fight here. Like the Boner Giant's out of ammo. Just you got to juke those Ushapti Grapeos. And then I think Sisters could just sit and use all their ammo on Isabella, right? Just like sit and take her out. Looks like right now they might go for a Gooning on Tetra, which is very risky. It might pay off. We'll find out. Yep, Setra gets a nice little AoE. The Witch Elves might Rampage him. If Setra takes a little bit more damage, he's actually going to get Rampage. Because you have to be below 80%, if I'm not mistaken, to be Rampaged. And your HP, you can't be Rampaged by uh, the Witch Elves and those type of effects when you're at full health. Incantation of Desiccation going down. Sisters piling into fight. Marathi going to be lowering the stats down to 20 melee attack on Setra. But the no healing is really, really hurting. I think Sisters need to get up in the sky and use their ammo. That's like a really valuable resource, which they're really not capitalizing on. Zombie Summon is active. That's going to help Tar Pit and uh, keep the Witch Elves from getting the ideal engagements. The Elves do have some Archer units coming back in, but I feel like they're not going to be terribly impactful as the Sisters of Twilight still continue to go after Setra, who does get the uh, big fat heals there. Red Fury is active. Looks like the Wand of Crydon is going to be getting dropped. Sisters do get a nice diving attack, which might allow them to escape here. Ten Leadership going to be trying to get away from Isabella, but Isabella hot on the tail here of the Sisters of Twilight. And the dragon is going to be fleeing the scene. So sisters do have their own heal. They have the conjoined destiny, which can heal them. You can see here right now, they're actually going to heal, but they're shattered, so it doesn't matter. But um, they can heal themselves still, but yeah. Hey, thank you guys for smiting the Slanesh bot. Appreciate that, Jay Phoenix. All right, so there it is. A nice scrap. Honestly, the game, I think, was winnable for both sides. Just came down to, uh, just came down to... You know, the healer dying, really. Like, that healer was so valuable to both sides. I also think the cavalry engagement was a bit of a bust that they took there. Like, I think if they hadn't taken that cavalry engagement and they hadn't um, lost their healer, could have been a very even game. I think they might have even won it based on how that final outcome went. So, going on over to the web browser, let's go ahead and get this bad boy going. And uh, just update things, yeah. Let's, let's just update all the things. So, that is going to be the Council of Thirteen. Not Skaven players. I love it. They have to. They had. They had to make it clear when they signed up. But they just, you know, they wanted to have that Skaven action, which is great. All right. So it should update here in a second. Let's see if we can get it. All right. All right. Thank you for joining. By the way, we got a donation coming in from Don Toto. Hey, Turn. I'm going through some of some rough times in your streams. Always cheer me up. Amazing work, making things better for the community and commentating. Hey, thank you, man. I'm sorry you're going through some rough times. Hopefully, we can help you get through those. I can feel your pain, man. It's uh, it's been it's been a hard year for sure. Toto, man, we'll get you through it. We'll get you through it. Thank you so much for your donation, dude. And uh, next up, we have the Varus Academy, Undead versus Chaos, and then we have an Undead Mirror match actually. <laughs> so there's three Undead and one Chaos Alliance left in the Grand Finals. There wasn't. We had like no Order Tide today. We did not have a single Order Tide sign up, which is so strange. They're really good. Like Bretonia Dwarves, really really strong. Empire can do some really good artillery builds as well. I'm incredibly surprised we didn't see that. So we got the Varus Academy versus Terracotta Rats. So let's go ahead and find that lobby. And uh, we'll go from there. All right. So just finding this. So Terracotta Rats versus... One second here. Looking here. Uh, one moment. So just got to find these bad boys. All right, Terracotta Rats versus the Varus Academy. And then who is on Terracotta Rats? I believe it's Caradox team. Yes. And I will join. All right, so they're going to set up the lobby, which should be good. And we will be all good to party, and we'll go from there. Yes, yes. 
The Wah and Friends, yeah. The Wah and Friends tried. They tried. They, they, uh, we gave them ogre units because we wanted to have like a unique one that was kind of like strange, but yeah, it was, it was hard to fit them in because like, yeah, they're fighty, but there's not really any other like factions that are just focused on like pure destruction. Like they're chaos focused, right? Maybe we could pull Norska. We could like pull Norska from the Chaos Alliance and put them with the Wah. Like we're still experimenting with the format, so bear with me. Yeah. I think today we just like the undead are really dominant because we didn't get any order tides yeah to, to fight them yeah which is which is my my suspicion all right so let's get in here we're joining it up like they they had they have ogre units which are really good actually the basic ogre units are very cost effective all right so this is a VM clan duel here it's gonna be terracotta rats versus. Uh, Varus Academy, I believe is how they spell it. Let me go ahead and double check. Yes, perfect. So switching on over to the lobby, let's get this party started. It is going to be a Chaos Alliance. Uh, any given Sunday too, you know, it depends on like what teams you sign up and what you run into. I mean, everybody's pretty capable of winning for sure. Tomb Kings could kind of be added into some order factions for sure. Azag could go with Vampire Counts. Yeah, you could like have Azag sub faction be allowed with them. There's a lot of like weird stuff you could do. All right, so so for map, use the, for the map, let's go ahead and give them uh, Sword of Torgald. All right, so Sword of Torgald is going to be the map. We have the Terracotta Rats facing off against the, the uh, VM clan. Well, they're both VM clans. They're all VM players. Alexander, man, with the fat hundred. Holy shit, man. Yes, yes, gave into the best. The old world and new world. Screech hiss. Yeah, and they are in Age of Sigmar. Skaven will stab, stab, kill those. Uh, cafe, old friends. Betray, must betray. Get shiny warp stones for horned rat. Summon great rat and toad. Yeah, we need some Thankful. And we also need the Vermin Lords. That shit needs to happen in Warhammer 3. Dude, Alexander, man. That's a mega generous donation. Uh, really hope it's not a tax on you. Thank you so much, man. Oh, a Mistwalker Alliance. Let Eltharian bring the Knights of Torg. Oh, yeah. Poison Ducky. Dude, we'll for sure do that. We'll for sure add Eltharian sub-faction, and that sounds really fun. Alexander, man, thank you for the Chubb donation. Greatly appreciate that. So, I don't have any bias. Like, I like all these players, but I would like to see no mirror match in the finals. So, obviously, that would be nice. If we don't have like the dreaded undead mirror match with literally identical teams in the grand finals, but you know it is what it is. Shit happens, and uh, this tournament's going a lot faster than I expected. Like last time, it took like three or four hours. I guess I started casting uh, in the round of twelve last time, which I guess I could have done. So maybe in the future I will do that. Yeah, you could add a true neutral faction. Yeah, we could. We could. All hail the Skaven. They skitter from the deep, yeah. <laughs> With haggard tails. Absolutely. Little rat tails. Rats are pretty cool creatures, actually. Yeah. I, I had a couple of friends growing up who had pet rats, and they were always really cool. They're, like, smart and pretty friendly, you know? I remember we would, like, hang out on his couch, and the rat would just be, like, sitting on the arm of the couch, like, watching movies with us. Yeah. Neat little critters. How about the Elector Count units? Now we're getting a little bit crazy. Yeah. Now we're getting a little bit crazy. Yeah, I'll think of some. We'll, we'll think of more alliances. We'll think of more alliances. Alexander, man, thank you so much again for that donation, dude. That's that's a fat one. Alrighty, so we've seen these two armies before. It's going to be the classic Isabella Cetra combo coming in from the forces of the uh, Varus Academy. Yeah, so you got Isabella, you got Cetra the Imperishable, and for the Chaos team, we have uh, Sarthoriel the Everwatcher. This team does have more Gisales and Mortars, though. The other team that they faced, the Chaos Alliance, did not have that many ranged tools. So it'll be interesting to see how helpful they are. But we got Warp Chicken and a Grace here. Very, very similar to the other Chaos teams we've seen. But overall, uh, this is it. Elector counts units for people who take double Empire. See, Jay Phoenix, that is exactly the kind of thinking I like. Because it forces you into like a suboptimal team, but it gives you a perk. So you can bring like you can bring like the Caraber Great Swords, the Emperor's Wrath Steam Tank. Yeah, I okay. Now we're, now we're getting spicy here. I like this. I like this. Yeah. Yeah, green skins are pretty neutral. They smash everyone, yeah. 
I'm going to add some weird alliances for the next one. We'll do like the uh, the Empire the Empire United, which is they can get the Electric Count units. Uh, and I think we'll add one in for the Mistalkers. So if they go with Eltharian and stuff action, they can bring the Mistwalker units. I like that. I think that's pretty damn cool. Because it's just a fun format, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Watching movies, right? More like planning your downfall and how much warp stone it could get. Yeah. Absolutely, man. So Gisales and Mortars will be nice. I think it's two Gisales against how many Ushapti? It looks like it's going to be triple Ushapti. So the Ushapti should have an advantage, especially with Isabella dropping zombie summons and things like that. But the Mortar teams will be quite devastating. They can wear down most of the Undead Chaff at a very low price point. So that is good. Let us know your predictions. Do you think that the dreaded Undead Horde will advance to the Grand Finals? Who ended up winning last time, by the way? Did the Undead win last time? I think it was like a very close Finals, right? Yeah, it was, wasn't it Bretonia Dwarves versus Undead and uh, Tomb Kings? I think that was the case. Factions, but with campaign units. See, Willow knows. He knows what's up. That's good stuff. I'm trying to think of which ones are really OP. Yeah, Rats, IRL, are extremely low. That's what I've heard, yeah. I think it'd be a cool pet someday to have, like, a pet rat. Definitely give it a Warhammer name. Yeah, a little, little critter. The Triple U Shopti Comet, they do... They do. This map has interesting, like, terrain, too, in the middle. Like, you can hide your mortars behind this and, like, shoot over, and your opponent can't shoot them back. But, you know, that goes both ways, right? Like, the Ushapi Great Bow can use it to line of sight the Gisales, too. So it's a little bit of a little bit of back-and-forth action there. We will see who will be making it on to the Grand Finals. Looks like Lunacy and Void Laws stand ready. Facing off against their clanmates here. So VM is here with uh, two teams. I believe they have three in the, grand, three in the top four. There's one non-VM team, I think. Yeah, pretty wild. Yeah, little critters. Yeah, it'd be cool to have a pet rat. Although our, our current dog would not allow for that, so it'll have to be way, way down the road. We have like a Chihuahua Terrier mix that is just like literally Satan. She just like attacks everything. Yeah. Call him Skrulk. Yeah, I don't know what Skaven character I would choose. Maybe Thankful might be a good name too. Skrulk is fun too because he's just some pestilent. You know, well, we wouldn't want it to actually be pestilent, but Skrulk is Skrulk is a fun name. You could do Queek. Queek is great too. Queek is a classic, like Queek Head Taker. I think what we would do is if we'll do a poll on the channel. If it ever does come to it, we'll do a poll, and you guys can vote on the name of the uh, of the little critter, and we will decide as a community. All right, so the Chaos Alliance is going to be advancing forward, and so too will the Undead, just waddling at their very slow pace with their zombies. Looks like there is some Vanguard in the back. We got some Chaos Warhounds kind of chilling in the deep shadows, but overall, not getting too crazy. And it looks like the Ushapti Grapo are going to be doing like a ceremonial march right down the middle here. Look at this. They're all in like that pencil formation. They won't be able to shoot through this, I don't think. But I think they're just trying to hide from the Gisales mostly, which is interesting. Good luck. Have fun being dropped on both sides. Yeah, Queek is the best rat name. Yeah, it's pretty good. Throt, Throt would be good too. If he's like a fat rat, I guess you'll have to see the rat. Yeah. Yeah, we will see. So we shop two Grapos getting into the low ground here of the Sword of Torgold. A little bit close to the enemy army, though. But again, nothing can shoot them, nor can they really shoot anything. So it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. Uh, you know, what Chaos could do, for example, is they could get, you know, the big chicken and come, like, down and under here. Oh, they can actually shoot up a little bit. That's kind of cool. Yeah, so they, I guess they, they have the Arc of Fire to be firing. Hey, Willow, thank you for the 500 AED. Thank you so much. If the stream ends early, can we have an FFA to close it out? Absolutely so. Thank you so much. Holy shit, man. That is some big chungus donations. I think that's like 100 bucks. So thank you so much. Really appreciate that, Willow. Yeah, we'll do some FFAs. Don't you worry. We'll do a couple. As a matter of fact, depending on how things go. Thank you so much, Willow. Greatly appreciate that, man. So, we shopped the great bows. Still just shooting at the chicken, I think, or the Grey Seer. It looks like they're getting a little bit of damage on the Grey Seer. Nothing, nothing too bad. And now these Scavenger Zales are going to be shooting, and it looks like they're able to draw a line of sight as well. So the Ushapti Grapos actually are not safe in that uh, little valley right there. They can still be focused down. Yeah, some nice juking, though, by Void Laws, man. Just showing his tournament savvy here, able to mitigate a lot of those shots. The Chaos Alliance choosing not to advance, playing very, very cautiously. Marauder Horsemen are being pulled back, maybe just going to be trying to play the ammunition game because the Grace here is also juking, and a lot of the shots are missing, so both players are just kind of mitigating each other's value with a good micro and juking and all that sort of good stuff. But uh, overall, very, very cautious play on both sides. It looks like the Rat Ogres are doing a little bit of a patrol move in the back line, which is quite funny. And I feel like this is going to be a very tactical game. 
Yeah, Chungus would be a good name for a rat too, for sure. Yeah, it'd be pretty hilarious. Ushapti, still getting focused, taking a little bit of damage here and there, but for the most part, it's being dodged. Probably should switch targets every now and then. It looks like the Gisales here are now shooting into zombies, which is a big mistake. Normal Swamp is going to want to switch those onto something else, like the Ushapti, and just switching back and forth and back and forth makes it very, very tough for people to effectively juke. Like, juking with two units at once is very hard to do. Void is, is doing a pretty good job of it, but uh, here you can see these uh, Chosen of the Gods actually start to take some damage there. So they are taking a bit of work for sure. In the backfield, we got the dogs who've been discovered by the fell bats. It looks like we're going to have a clash of fates. Maybe Lunacy will send in the dogs to battle the Chaos Warhounds or the bats. The bats might win if they get the charge. I'm not sure how that would actually go. And will the Chaos Alliance advance forward? It looks like they really don't want to. They want to force the undead to come to them, which I completely understand. I'm having them march into mortar fire. Uh, if they can outlast the ammunition of the undead force, that's going to be a thing. Shopti Greatbow is wasting ammo on Skaven Slaves. That's got to feel pretty good. Chosen of the Gods getting a couple shots into Skaven Slave Spears on the flanks. We have more Warhounds hidden around the map. And is the fight being taken? Yes, it is. So some of the Warhounds... Oh, man, they're trying to escape. But the Black Knights and the Bats are able to find them. And it looks like Caradoc's uh, Chaos Warhound Vanguard will be caught and push off the edge of the map. So definitely a little bit of a loss there. Not the end of the world, but overall it will uh, will hurt a little bit. So Arrow's Incantation of Protection going down on the Ushapti. For some reason, Gisales do not do magic damage, even though they're... Quite literally firing Warpstone glowing bullets, but we will uh, not ask questions. Gisele switching targets back and forth. Now they're going to be going after the Chosen of the Gods here. Um, potentially Chicken is going to be going as well. He's got to watch out though. Setra is kind of chilling nearby. Ushapti here taking some damage. And ammunition trading is pretty even at this point. But I think they just want to like get the Gisales and the Ushapti Grapo to trade ammo. And then from there, just kind of chill and use their mortars to bombard the advancing undead forces. Hard to say. So here's Setra and the Tomb Prince looking like they want to push out and push the chicken back, and the chicken is going to be running. Matty Booba sharpshooters still blasting into whatever they can. Looks like they do switch a couple shots onto your boy Setra and get maybe like 100, 200 damage. Nothing terribly crazy. The two White Kings are also maneuvering over here, which makes me think that maybe there's going to be a character like kind of blob push here. Rod or Horseman in good shape, but very, very cautious play on both sides. Very, very cautious play. So what do we have here? Poison Wind Mortars now bombarding in, going after, I'm not sure what, maybe the zombies here? And these Ushapti are taking a little bit of damage as they actually charge headlong in. This would be a very good opportunity for the forces of the uh, Terracotta Rats to actually shoot in and just punish these Chosen of the Gods, and they are doing so. Chosen of the Gods running, but taking quite a bit of damage. I don't know if there's any Restorers on this team. I don't think so. I think Isabella can invo these guys. I can't remember if you can invo them, yeah. So Invocation of Nehek being used, very, very strong. But I mean, that's one less heal that's going to be going down onto one of the big SEMs or different things like that. But uh, yeah, still a nice heal. I wonder if Invocation actually resurrects Ushapti models since they're like constructs. I think it actually still does. Here in the front, though, Big Chicken getting some nice engagement. He actually moves in and gets an overcasted final transmutation on the Ushapti Grapo, which might seem a little bit weird to like use it on a single target. But when you're trying to win the range duel, I kind of understand the approach there and why you would do that. So those Ushapti really get punished badly. Actually crumbling down. Invocation's on cooldown now as well, so it's not going to be there. And, uh, you know, the funny thing is, if the Terracotta Rats are able to win this, they'll be, like, super practiced, right? Because the opponent they'll be facing in the finals is going to be an undead as well, I think. So there goes the Scab Scrape down the Chaos Warriors. Doesn't really do much damage against armor. Some of the Mortar teams do auto-fire. Those guys probably need to be taken off auto-fire. These Ushapti back here still crumbling down. Negative 5 leadership. Some of the Mortar shots hit. No, they all miss. They all miss right there. A little bit unfortunate. Ushapti Grapo do get hit with an Invocation. That's, you know, a fair amount of Wind's Magic that has been used to uh, essentially heal up those units. Ushapti Grapo here on the low ground, going to be shooting back. You can see they're firing. And the Marauder Horsemen Corps are actually getting a little bit aggressive. So we do have a flank coming in the forest. I think it's going to be spotted. We will see how quickly Karadok is able to react here. And uh, it looks like he reacts very quickly and is able to get away from those Blood Knights. So the Blood Knights shouldn't do too much damage there. Gracier of Rune, pretty beat up. Warp Chicken, healthy. Giselle fire shooting into Cetra, gotten a little bit of damage on him. I would imagine they'll switch back to the uh, Chosen of the Gods at this point. And where are the other, where are the other missile pieces? Yeah, so we have Warplock, Giselle's here, one, two, and I think there's only two in total. Really probably wishing they had a third one right now. Looks like the Grace here may have used some sort of an ability there. I didn't quite see it. But Ushapti taking more damage. The other ones in the back do stabilize. Despite the Warp Chicken's big kind of dive right there, I think you do want to save a big final trans... Uh, they're called the Terracotta Rats because that's their team name. If you look on the top left, the Terracotta Rats are the uh, the Chaos Alliance and the Undead Alliance is called the Varus Academy. So that's their team name. That's why I'm calling them that. So Obviously, maybe a little bit inspired by Cathay. 
Looking like Setra wants to move in. Who shop your Grapos? Have some ammo left. We have some on the Chosen of the Gods. These ones are quite low, and these ones are at about 50%. So honestly, both players are pretty, uh, or both teams, I say, I would say, are pretty equal in terms of ammunition. Like, they can continue to play this game for, you know, quite some time. We're already seven, over seven minutes in. We haven't seen too much, like, melee engagements. It's mainly just been, like, skirmishing and posturing and prodding for position. But now it looks like the undead are kind of moving in a little bit. A little bit of a vice grip. They are trying to get aggressive, move in with their zombies, maybe pressure through the Skaven slaves using their monsters and start to cause some problems for the Chaos Alliance. Very strange to see the, the Chaos armies on the defensive here. Although I guess with Skaven, it's a little bit more normal, right? Skaven are more of a defensive team. There are some uh, Chaos Warhounds hiding up in the bushes over there. They could certainly cause some problems in the late game if they're able to catch something. So we will see how that goes. Scab's Great going down. Nice little one on the Chaos Marauders. And the Marauder Horseman able to finish off the bats, it looks like, or at least get them to crumble. Negative nine leadership. Second Scab's Great going down on Chaos Marauders. It's cute, but it doesn't really do too much damage. Granted, there aren't really too many great targets for the Scab's Greats here. So the Undead pincering in, the Gisales using ammo actually on the, the bats here. Oh, there are two Gisales over here. So there's two plus... Okay, so there are three Gisales in total. That actually makes the, the trade much more efficient for the Skaven. This is great value, though. The Mortar teams going into the Graveguard with great weapons is very, very cost-effective. If they could just keep the Mortars onto the Graveguard the entire game, they're just going to have a really, really good time. So we will see if they're able to continue doing that. Though in the front line, you know, the Vampiros are moving in. We have the uh, the Black Knights and the Graveguard and Graveguard Great Weapons and Chariots, I think. Oh no, this one doesn't have Chariots. That's one of the other ones. But we do have Weird Spawn plus Chaos Warriors. Should be able to hold them back for some time. Cetra moving in on the flanks, attacking some of the Ogres. Ogres will get some damage back for sure. And it looks like a Chieftain's being pulled in. And, uh, you know, this might be a little bit dangerous for the Tomb Kings. With the Chieftain plus the uh, consistent DPS from the Ogres, they could actually take quite a bit of work here. And the Chieftain comes in and gets a big shot on that Tomb Prince right there. Very, very nice for sure. Very, very nice. And here in the back, Felbats from Lunacy are diving in. Chaos Warriors are going to be surging forward to cleave them asunder. Mortar teams still firing partially, I think. It looks like these ones actually shut down for now. As Chaos is holding back the advance in the front. Uh, some of the Skaven Slaves, of course, have buckled. But for the most part, Chaos seems to be in a, in a cozy position. The Dreaded 13 spell being used as well by the Grey Seer. And that might be able to pin in Cetra and the Horsemen. That was actually really good. So a lot of the Tomb King's characters here might be, I, I wouldn't say dying, because Isabella is going to come over and use the Blood Chalice, which has already been used on Cetra, but this Tomb Prince could very well die. The Chieftain probably wants to go after the Tomb Prince. I think that's a little bit more of an attainable target, but that is a lot of Storm Vermin Halberds there. And you can see the Nehekar Horseman support units are really, really getting buckled off super quick. Super quickly there. So Isabella von Karstein flying back over. The Grey Seer does get hit with the Curse of Dejaff. From the Tomb Prince, which actually rampages him. And then Isabella's going to be coming in with the Steel Chair. Getting some nice, nice damages. Warp Chicken. Warp Chicken was probably needed over here. If Warp Chicken could have gotten a final transmutation, Cetra may have actually died there. It's a little bit hard to say. He was kind of low. So Horseman moving over. Tomb Prince is in the Danger Zone. Invocation being used to heal him up. A uh, single target invo, but I don't think it's going to save him. So I think that cast is going to be wasted by the forces of the Varus Academy. We will see if the Tomb Prince can live. I mean, the Ogres and Chaos Warriors are getting some good damage there. Now across the battlefield, pretty even engagements. The Graveguard Great Weapons having some very efficient trades. I feel like in 2v2s, when you don't know what your opponent's army is going to be, you should always bring Great Weapons, like with Chaos Warriors and things like that. In my experience, they tend to do uh, a little bit better, right? Because it's better. Yeah, like, yeah, they're not quite as tanky, but it's like still, if you don't have the armor piercing, you're really going to suffer. So somehow that Tomb Prince got away. Pretty crazy. It looks like the Chieftain might have gotten a little bit distracted. He should really try and finish off that character. Uh, maybe the Chieftain's going to go after Setra, which is a massive mistake. I think if you go after Setra here, what's going to happen is Isabella's going to come out and they're going to 2v1 that Chieftain. Although there still are Ogres on top of Setra, so maybe they will be able to get some good damage. We will see. Balance of Power is pretty even at this point. Looks like a big Final Transmutation did go down here, which is going to be nailing the Graveguard and did tickle the pickle there of that White King who actually comes back into it at the very end and gets another tick of damage. But yeah, the Final Transmutation is not being used in Blob Fight super hardcore, but... The Vampiric Infantry uh, have taken some damage. It looks like there still are some Graveguard over here. Ushapi your Grapo still shooting. I think most of the Mortar teams are offline. Yeah, they're all being like hunted pretty effectively here in the backfield. Some Gisales come back and are ripping some shots into the uh, Nehekar Horsemen while the Marauder Horsemen try and salvage that. One Mortar team is back here. Gisale team is back here. If they could stabilize those weapon teams, that'd be quite strong. And Cetra is kind of getting worked on, man. This Chieftain is really just doing some work right now. Cetra is like almost healing capped. Oh, but the Prince is coming in. And this is like why letting that Prince live earlier is going to be a big, big problem. Yeah, the Prince comes in with his anti-large attack and finishes off the Skaven Chieftain, who is now dead. So that was a super, super clutch play there by the uh, forces of the Varus Academy. 
Ward of Fire bombarding from downtown. Marauder Horseman trying to stabilize Siege of Zales on the edge of the map by finishing off these bad boys. Chicken is pretty healthy. And man, if that chicken had a beautiful final transmutation here, look at this. I mean, Cetra plus that Tomb Prince would both just be in the danger zone for sure. Aside from that, how is Chaos doing? They seem to have some weird spawn cutting through the Graveguard. More Graveguard here. A lot of Vampire Infantry really, really proven to be incredibly sustainable. Brown, thank you for the donation. Long time lurker. About time I paid the dues. Thank you for paying the troll toll, man. Really appreciate that. And hopefully you're enjoying the uh, content. We're going to be getting a lot of fun stuff in the next couple months. Obviously, Warhammer 3 stuff as soon as we can. And uh, Age of Empires 4 next month. Really excited for that. I still have a fair amount of replays from Age of Empires to show you guys. So, Isabella von Karstein flying up in the sky. Pretty damn even game. Skaven, if they can stabilize these Poison Wind Warders, are going to be cackling quite happily. The Undead characters are very, very beat up at this point, but Warp Chicken kind of stands alone. The Grey Seer here did get beaten up pretty bad, but there are a lot of Marauder Horsemen. Marauder Horsemen will get some incremental damage here. It looks like the Blood Chalice of Bathori has been used on Homeboy, which is going to give him a ton of healing. Yeah, very, very nice. Such that the Imperishable getting that juicy heal and Nero's Incantation of Protection going down to give him some uh, good old physical resist against those Horsemen. Here comes Chicken going after the Ushaptu Grapeo. Weird spawn finishing off the Graveguard. Great opens here in tandem with some Chaos Warriors. And the Chaos Warrior Great opens seem to be having decent trades across the map as they uh, should be able to finish these Graveguard with the support of the Rat Ogres. You can see there's going to be a nice collapsing charge there as the Graveguard do kind of overstretch the Chaos Warriors. But with the Graveguard being attacked by the Ogres as well, they should fall as they get absolutely just karate chopped by these big rat people. Bounce Power is pretty even. This is a really close game. Really, really close match. Um, ammunition is a little bit sparse. Here we get a White King a little bit trapped up, but I don't think there's going to be any way to like punish him. Marauder Horsemen aren't going to be doing great damage. They really need to finish off this Tomb Prince. He he was so clutch this game. The Tomb Prince with the uh, the Curse of the Jaff and uh, all that business really, really was a problem. Good juking by Void Laws, man. These guys are just so on point with their, their micro. Both teams are. Very, very solid. Is that a final transmutation? Uh, no, it wasn't. I thought it was for a second. Here, the Grave Guard are getting worn down 35 models, but it looks like the Ogres were pulled away from that engagement. We shopped the Grapos for Void Lulls are being used to dive back here on top of the Poison Wind Mortars, but the Ogres will make very quick work of them in combat. That's pretty much what they're designed to do. We actually got some Hounds getting on the Chosen of the Gods. These are the Hounds that were vanguarded in the tree line back there, but it looks like the Undead are pulling ahead a little bit as, uh, you know, just with le the leaderless Skaven is a bit of a problem, right? Like the Gracier dying that early in the battle was really, really rough for sure because the Undead still have most of their kit. A couple good catches too, like that Tomb Prince needed to be killed. The fact that he was able to come back and finish off the Chieftain that was like fighting Cetra was very, very problematic for sure. So the Tomb Prince and Cetra the Imperishable rallying their forces here. Chaos Infantry marching forward, a fair amount of Chaos Warriors. And uh, Big Bird probably saving up for a big nuke. I think that's potentially going to be their best chance to get back in the game. Mortar teams have come back, which is nice. Should be able to drop some bombardments here on the Skeleton Spearmen. Graveguard here are crumbling down. Should probably falter, even though the Marauders are quite beat up as well. Should be enough to finish them off. And now Big Bird is taking his weird spawn. There's still a lot of Rat Ogres. Looks like the Corpse Cart uh, with the Balestone is going to be going down here to the Ogres, although the Ushapu Grapeo might be able to peel them off. Cetra is healthy, but he's healing capped. There's not going to be any more healing, but the Tomb Prince plus like the White Kings, there's a lot of stopping power, but one big final transmutation could absolutely end the game. But I feel like Void Lulls and Lunacy are like too strong of players to allow that to happen. Like, I don't think that would go down like that. I really don't. I think they would be, uh, you know, pretty cautious about that. Sorry, guys, just had to minimize for a second. We're back in business and uh, and yeah, we're going, man. So Bounce Power now noticeably in the favor of the Undead Alliance. Here, Sarthorial, the Ever Bird, able to finish off the Corpse Cart. In the back, Rad Ogres hunting down the Ushapti. It looks like that was an Ushapti summon. So the Ushapti summon has been used here to pin down these Ogres, which is a great play. They still have 12 of 12 models, and now they're going to be getting pinned in by Spears. That's probably why the Bounce Power switched, because you had a full health unit of Ogres basically just getting eviscerated right there. And now the forces of the uh, Terracotta Rats are going to be assembling their entire Legion. The Undead Army is very beat up. I mean, it's mainly just Ushaptis plus characters. Like, there's really no meat left in this army. It's just the Undead, you know, heroes, which is very standard. I mean, even in 1v1s, that's usually how the Undead cackle, right? They just get those troops. Uh, the Ushapti here will be disappearing in a moment. Looks like they just hit their second tier of degeneration. A little bit problematic, too. The Undead still have a couple spear units, so Chaos might struggle to deal with those. I mean, Chaos Warriors could probably fight them in Weird Spawn and all that sort of stuff, but basically, the Chaos Army at this point really needs to stay together and keep their shit, like, tight and force a blob fight. The final transmutation is, like, the only way they have of winning here, so... Or the fact if the Undead are too scared to take a blob fight and they can, like, pick things off, that would 100% be the way, so... Shop your Grapo running across the map. Chaos Warriors doing the same thing. Skeleton Spearmen also moving across the map. Both players essentially just trying to regroup right now. Can the Ogres catch them? Probably. Yeah, 54 speed. A couple of Marauder Horsemen maybe going to be going for the kill in the Tomb Prince as well. We'll see. 
Yeah, just keep it high and tight. They can even take their Chaos Army and go kill the Skeleton Spears, which won't have the speed to get away. So you could just go here and get these as a freebie if they wanted to. Last of the ammunition being used on the Horseman. It is effectively juked here by the Tomb Prince of Void Law, so he is able to get away. And here comes the Marauder Horseman. Yes, continuing to drop their Spears of Doom. 5200 HP on Cetra, who is healing capped. Takes a little bit of uh, damage there. The Bird is coming. The Bird is an okay duelist. He's got 60, 40, 440. Not the best armor piercing character, but if he's able to get like three attacks on the Tomb Prince, it should be able to kill him. Although one White King is down, Isabella is still here, and she's very, very healthy. Chaos Infantry moving in. And it looks like the Undead may be going to be coming in for a fight now. I think they're probably going to be dropping some sort of a summon, like maybe a zombie summon, and then just like using that to get their business going. I really do think it's going to be hard, though. Like, I feel like with the Vampiric characters, especially Cetra being such a dominant character, like, he, he's going to be able to just beat the beat the hell out of uh, Big Bird here. The only thing is, like, the Rat Ogres do give some anti-mass, and so, too, do the uh, Weird Spawn. A little bit of lag. Sorry, guys. We have players connecting from Central Europe, Eastern Europe, you know, the United States. So, it, it can happen in 2v2s. It's one of the reasons why I didn't do it for the longest time, but most of the games today have been pretty good. This one was not lagging up until, like, the very late game right here. All right, so the Chosen of the Gods, the dreaded Total War Warhammer slideshow is upon us. Chosen of the Gods going to be unleashing some shots into the big bird, maybe. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be going for that. Oh my god, it looks like we might be getting a mirror match of like the undead Isabella Cetra combo, which appears to be very strong. So birds going in. An overcasted invo, in interesting choice. Ogres do get a really nice charge into the Ushapti there. Should be able to actually crumble those guys down. Bird being attacked by the White King. And here, the Ushapti Great Bow, maybe just finish them off. Yeah, just stay the course. It looks like they're all trying to transition over onto Cetra. And yeah, those Ushapti Great Bow should be crumbling. Weird Spawn are also going to be quite formidable. Nice attack on Cetra. He does take about four or 500 damage there. Now we get a big blob fight. Now, will the chicken use his final transmutation here, or will he wait for Cetra and the Tomb Prince? You've got to wait for the Tomb Prince. You can see here that they're being very cautious. Void is like keeping it back because he knows that is pretty much what the other team is planning. So they're just committing like Isabella and like some of these uh, Ushapti and things like that. But if maybe not committing those units will be, you know, an issue, right? Weird Spawn are sundering the armor of some of the units. I believe they do have the armor sundering. So yeah, you can see here these Ushapti are armor sundered. Big Bird's still bouncing out, but being attacked pretty aggressively by the White King. I think it's now or never. If you have it, you have to cast it. I don't think you can afford to wait too much longer. Isabella coming into the rear charge on Sarthorial, the Ever Watcher. The Chaos Army does break, and that is going to be GG as the Undead Horde will claim victory here in this tournament. Remember PowerPoint? I do. I remember using PowerPoint for all the good college funness. Yeah, it's getting better. It's getting better. Seems like the lag has subsided for the most part. GG, well played! Victory for the Varus Academy. And they'll be going on to the Grand Finals, so let's go ahead and update ye old scoreboard. That was a good match, though. That was a, that was a good, proper, scrappy match. Long, technical, pretty fun. So now we have another one of those on the bottom. Varus Academy will be advancing to the finals. We have the Council of 13 versus Super Team 1, which I believe is actually an Isabella Cetra mirror match, which is hilarious. Yeah, just absolute memes. You guys ready to watch that twice in a row? Because if you are, you're in the you're in the goddamn right place. GG, well played. All right. Let's get this party started. And get the next game going. So finding super team. Password is one, two, three. And I will get to chat in just a second. Just gonna be getting the setup. I see some fun messages. Uh, map is going to be, we can just go ahead and do Galbaraz for the map. All right, so who's on the left? It looks like we do have the Council of 13. Council of 13 facing off against super team one. We're all set. Let's switch it on over. Adjust the nameplates a little bit. Start when ready. All right. So Ravela says, uh, Turin, I bought some Polish pierogi and noticed it tastes almost, it's it's similar, but it depends. I mean, uh, yeah, I've, I've had Asian gyoza. Oh, Japanese, yeah, gyoza for sure. I studied Japanese in high school and they used to take us on like field trips and try all that, that delicious food. Um, but yeah. Mirror final. It's it's inevitable now, guys. There's literally three teams left, and all of them have the exact same combo with minor nuances. Yeah. 
I try and join the FFA, but I'm still playing, uh, painting my Night's Watch army. No problem, J Phoenix. No problem. We will have an FFA to close things out, though. Yeah. Polish pierogi is very different than gyoza. Gyoza, in my experience, I, although it depends, but yeah. I don't know if you had like proper Polish pierogi where, you know, it has all the all the bells and whistles with it. It's very different when you do. If you just have it from like the supermarket, it's it's going to be seem similar. But if you have like proper pierogi, it's very, very different. Yeah. And I miss it. I want some right now. Holy shit. I've only had like three rice cakes today and like like a couple tomatoes. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm going on fumes here. Yeah, Song of Ice and Fire Tabletop. We actually have a pretty big community here, Jay Phoenix. In uh, Los Angeles, they have tournaments at my local store and they play. And I've gone in there and there's been like 12 to 18 people playing. And it's like, looks like a lot of fun. Night's Watch is from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Expros Ice. Uh, should you buy Total War Warhammer 2? I mean, the thing is with this game, like normally with other titles, you don't want to buy titles once a new one comes out. But with this game, you need to in order to get the factions. So... Like, if you ever want to play, like, older factions and not just the new ones, like, yeah, you should. But honestly, you could just wait, too, and just, like, enjoy the new factions. Because if you buy game three, like, you're just going to get all the goodies. I also don't know about your financial situation, so, you know, it depends. No, no, I just ran out of food. Yeah, I just, I didn't have too many, too many other good tr treats to have. You know, Jay Phoenix, I just put, I, I play 40k and I just got into Age of Sigmar 2, so I'm like painting up a full Empire army right now. So I'm like, I'm stretched pretty thin in terms of models, but someday I will. Yeah, I would love to pick it, pick that game up. There's a couple other tabletop games I'm interested in. All right, so here we are. The motorcycle announces a great victory. Yes, yes. It's going to be an Undead Mirror match. So we have the basically the Cetra Isabella team that has a Bone Giant and Triple Blood Knight facing off against Super Team, which has Cetra Isabella, a Grapos, and a Big Sphinx. So basically, it's like the Big Sphinx versus the uh, the Bone Giant and the Blood Knights. A little bit of a difference. Yeah. Man, this is gonna be this is gonna be some some wild shit. So you guys are saying there's a big a, be, a big uh, Steam sale right now for Total War? Is like the are the main games on sale or is it just DLCs? Yeah. The dreaded motorcycle, I know. I know, guys. Not only are we getting an undead mirror match here, but we're getting one in the grand finals, which is so depressing. I mean, and literally like the same lords too. So, the doom wheel in the background, yeah. For the next the next tournament, we're gonna need some order tide to battle these uh, these undead. Yeah. Honestly, F Felcon's team almost won too. They almost took out uh, the undead team. It was very very close. Them versus super team, and I think they had a pretty good team against undead. They had a lot of monsters for gooning and and things like that. Like if we had an elvish union that had like Larry with Tempest and a scary air force, I feel like most of these undead teams would get wrecked because like you would just tempest them and kill Isabella out of the sky, and that would be it. The last map should be the Bone Zone. Yeah, you know what? I like that. We'll put them on the Bone Zone and they, they can just go fisticuffs. Yeah, yeah, I like that. We'll do Bone Zone. As a matter of fact, we should put them on like Mushroom Cave or like a map that has like a tiny deployment zone. Turn just got a job doing tech sales. No, no, that's all I do is the YouTube. That's all I do. Steam sale. I thought there was a Steam... Somebody was saying there's a Steam sale going on. Yeah. It's a very introspective fight. Cetra battling himself. Yeah, this is like the... This is this is going to be interesting. There are some nuances, though, in the builds. Like, you know, we have the Blood Knights for the for the forces of the Council of Thirteen. And these guys don't really have blood. They have, like, a couple Blood Knights, but not as many. And then there's, like, a Bone Giant over here. The Bone Giant should be interesting. Bone Giant probably just is going to alternate fire on the Vampiric characters, I would guess. Is he going to drop a fat shaft in the face here? Here it comes. The giant shaft shall be delivered to the face of the Vampire of Death. It looks like she dodges it. She does not want that shaft in her face. 2v2 Spirit Essence of Chaos. Do it. You won't. Oh, dude. Don't tempt me, dude. Uh, normally, I wouldn't. But since it's like an undead mirror match and we just want it to happen quickly. <laughs> you know? Like, getting on there is, is, is it's tempting. Okay. I'll take a look at all the sales. Maybe I'll make a video on it right now or something. Yeah, after the, after the stream. Up to 80%. Wow. It's a pretty good deal. So, Isabella flying over. It's ground-based Isabella. So Isabella for the forces of the Council of Thirteen is on the ground. 
Whereas uh, VM's Isabella, the super team, is flying. A little bit of damage coming in from that overcast there. That's pretty unfortunate, man. She took quite a bit. Does get a zombie summon on top of the skeletons. I, I have to think if it's worth it. I mean, maybe a couple skeleton archers will die. Maybe, maybe like two or three tops. But for the most part, those zombies are going to be crumped very quickly by the other undead forces. They're going to be pincering in there and doing their business. Now, we shop your great bows are going after the boner giant, as is the vampire. So a little bit of an overextension here by the Council of Thirteen. The Vampire of Death for Tank, as well as Isabella von Karstein, do slam in there. I think, no, Isabella's going to stay back. Got to be careful. The thing is, there are invos for this Bone Giant, right? So you could just invocation this bad boy and heal it up. I don't think there's any restores. I feel like they should use restores as well. Like, bring, like, an Ecrotex just to get, like, even more healing. And really capitalize on the, uh, the strengths of the undead here. So shop to great bows trading. Super team does also have access to a casket, I believe. Yeah, they brought a casket. The other team did not. So there are some minor differences here. We have the dreaded to shop to great bow duel. So two shop to great bows focusing down this one. The bone giant gets a fat shaft right in the face here of the chosen of the gods. Takes out a model. I mean, each attack should kill a model potentially with the bone giant shaft. We'll see. So he's winding up another one. We'll get the old cinematic shot. Let's get it in there for you guys. And boom, headshots as one of them does fall. We're now down to seven models. Invocation of Nahek. Maybe able to resurrect one. Oh, and it does. Oh, that's so cool. Did you guys see the Chosen the Ushapti, like, stand back up? I had never actually looked at that up close, but that actually looked kind of neat. So, Spirit Leeches here. Very good for the ranged artillery trades. Dropping Spirit Leeches on the Ushapti Grapos. You know what's kind of cool about this event as well is we, we finally get to see... Tomb Kings do well at something. You know, Tomb Kings, I mean, aren't a bad faction, but they really get neglected quite a bit in uh, competitive, at least in my anecdotal experience. So seeing them, you know, be a pretty powerhouse of a faction is very, very cool here in the 2v2 format. Which, I mean, they have a lot of great tools, right? But they just don't have the healing the other undead have. But when you address that weakness, man, oh man, shit gets real. So Archer shooting in from the super team, blasting into the Council of Thirteen's zombie front line, which is pushing up. The Bone Giant continuing to drop a giant shafts into the face of the Chosen of the Gods here. And let's see what kind of damage they've done. Eight models, but yeah, that, that's a good call. Just Bone Giant, just keep shafting them. You know, it's going to force edifications. Looks like they're going after... Ooh! The Bone Giant dropping shots on the Casket back here, which is a very good choice. We get a Vampire of Death. We will see how quickly the Council of Thirteen will react. They got Blood Knights in the back, so they really need to hammer these units. They can't be letting Isabella get in there for free. Yeah, it looks like the Isabella for the Council of Thirteen was able to fend off the Vampire of Death, while the Bone Giant continues to just drop giant shafts onto the casket back here. Let's see if it's going to rip another shot here in a moment. Skeleton Archer Fire, doing good work, finishing off most of the chaff units like the Zombies, the Casket of Souls, also quite nice against these various units here, shooting into the King Nikesh's Scorpion Legion. And on the flank, we do have the Dire Pack taking a heavy engagement versus the Nehekaro Horseman. So 41 models. The Nehekaro Horseman, of course, will win this. They're generally pretty good in these type of fights. So down they go. Good night, sweet princes. And that will be all for you. And here, Isabella von Karstein flies and looks for more opportunities to drop zombie summons into the backfield of the Council of Thirteen. Honestly, pretty close game, and it's it's relatively hard to tell what's going on. Hopefully, I'm doing uh, an okay job of uh, separating the units and who's doing what. We shot two great bows here of Super Team are going to be pulling back while the Bone Giant continues to go. But oh, the Necromancer block! Look at the MLG plays. Tank with the Necromancer block blocks the Casket of Souls. So this Necromancer is like, I want the Giant Shaft in the face. We're not going to let the Casket have it here in the back. So this is uh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, it becomes a lot more interesting when you have like range tools. Like if it's just a Vampire Count Mirror match, it's pretty terrible. But this is still very interesting, I would say. Uh, Blood Knight fighting here on the flank. It looks like a zombie summon going down from the Council of Thirteen. Trying to tarp it the retreating Knights of uh, Super Team. And it looks like the Council of Thirteen actually got a better trade. Some of the Blood Knights are trapped here, and Tank is trying to get them away. But many of the Blood Knight models are trapped in summons and are uh, being dragged down through a very, very attrition-heavy fight. Now, the backfield Casket of Souls here is uh, still shooting quite happily. The Boner Giant really, really probably not doing too great, although it looks like he did get some shots on Isabella. Isabella took a lot of damage. So the Boner Giant must have given the shaft to uh, Isabella there. Hard to say. Looks like she took some of it. I'm not sure. Here comes another one. Shot from downtown. 2300. Where is that shaft going? Ooh, nice one. Right into the Sphinx. You know what? That Bone Giant might actually be a little bit of a player. You know, I was talking some shit, making fun of him, and then suddenly he just lands a couple giant shots. Isabella does heal up to full using the Blood Chalice of Bathori, but that's one less Blood Chalice that, you know, Cetra and the Sphinx are going to be getting. So it looks like there is actually a Necrotect here for Super Team. 
uh, as the big Sphinx here. Look at the healing, Jesus. A thousand, another 800 from Invocation. That is so goddamn good. So even fight so far, Bone Giant is crumbling down. He's got a couple shots left. I mean, he's delivered most of his payload, which is good. I don't think he's worth an Invocation. I mean, he's okay in combat, but generally I think it's probably not worth it. The Blood Knights for the Council of 13, very healthy. Both models here are at 45, or both uh, units. And the Blood Knights for the other team here are a little bit damaged, actually. I think one of the Blood Knights got fully dragged down. Yeah, they're at like 22 models. Another one's at 45. It honestly looks like the Council of 13 might be in a position to run over the super team here, considering the Blood Knights and, uh, you know, just the, the, the press that they're really getting here. They do also have access to, like, Tomb Guard and some better infantry units, which could make the difference in the late game. We'll have to see. Some, some sort of witchcraft going down here. Incantation of Desiccation. Going to be lowering the stats as the Blood Knights of the uh, the Council 13 charge in. Get a nice charge on the Ushapti Great Bow, also on the Big Sphinx. But there is going to be a counter zombie summon here from the forces of Super Team. So they drop the zombies, they tarp it, the uh, Blood Knights, and they also tarp it some of the monsters and might buy a little bit of time. Casket of Souls still going in the backfield. Bone Giant does release another shaft, which unfortunately does miss there. Tried its best, but this is a surprisingly close match. I honestly don't really know who's ahead here. It's, it's really, really hard to tell. Here comes the Bone Giant. One last shaft, and it does miss. He is out of ammo. He is crumbling. He's got about 1,000 HP. Now it's time for him to just march up and do the best he can. Here is Setra the Imperishable battling in the pits. The other Setra battling as well. Isabella von Karstein flying overhead looking for engagements. And it looks like the forces of the Council of Thirteen with Isabella and Setra are trying to get a 2v1 onto the Ushapti Great Bow here and or the Big Sphinx. Blood Knights piling in fighting on both sides, uh, getting some okay damage in. Let's go ahead and take a big macro look at the battlefield. It looks like the Vampire for Super Team is going to be able to finish off the Bone Giant. Bone Giant might be able to turn around and get like one Mike Tyson punch there before he goes. Here's a nice position here for the forces of the Council of Thirteen. We do have the Chosen of the Gods and a couple other missile pieces kind of lurking on the wings, which are in pretty good position. Whereas the missile presence of the Super Team is very bare bones. Right now, we just have a big, disgusting undead blob fight. It's uh, kind of honestly hard to tell what's going on. There is a Blood Chalice of Bathori. Going to be healing up that Cetra. Isabella for Super Team gets back up in the sky. And it looks like the Super Team has kind of stabilized here. And oh man, this could be big for Super Team. Isabella is actually trapped here. The Isabella for the Council 13. And she's being circle beaten by the Sphinx as well as the, uh, the Cetra. Yeah, she's going to have to get out. I mean, she does have Blood Knight support. A really nice invocation there as well. But if, if the Isabella dies for the uh, Council 13, I don't think it's going to matter what they have left. I think they're just going to lose the game. Yeah, we'll see. Isabella's really, really low in here. I think she's at like, you know, she's at like half health. Still has some room before her healing cap. And I think Cetra came back for the Council of 13, trying to jump on the back of the uh, Isabella here and really get some returning fire there. Now you have to remember the super team does have access to the big Sphinx. The other team did have a bone giant, right? So Council 13 has a bone giant. They have a little bit less monstrous dueling. So you can see here, Cetra is in a bit of a 2v1 fight. Now he's still getting some range support as his archers are shooting into the big monster. But Cetra is a little bit outgunned here. Yes, some bare bones. Yeah, I'm confused as well. It's uh, it's very, very tricky when you get into these literally double mirror matches. Like it's, uh, what are the odds of that, man? Like our, our top three players are all playing like the exact same army composition. Cetra the Imperishable is afflicted by the Master of Beguilement from Isabella. Isabella for Super Team looking to chase the Isabella for the Council of 13. Might be able to get the kill, but it looks like uh, Council 13 might be able to juke and get away. We will see. Casket of Souls doing some good damage. Might be able to break these guys down, but look at the Hagger juking coming in. Oh my god, that's so funny. Some Blood Knights are being pulled back. Oh, this could be the return. Blood Knights get a nice little charge on the Isabella here for Super Team. And then the Red Fury is active, and now Isabella from Super Team is trapped. Man, oh man, this is, this is a brutal game-changing play right here. That Isabella is getting put in the can. What a turn of events, just like pulling those Blood Knights, popping the Red Fury... Beautiful stuff. But the Big Sphinx coming in, trying to see if it can uh, settle the grudge. It does get a blow on Isabella. Should be able to finish her off here. Looks like Super Team was able to win that blob fight pretty decisively. And I think Super Team probably will be able to win this game based on that blob fight going a little bit better for them. The Sphinx able to probably carry a lot more weight than the Bone Giant did. And I think that was what we saw here in this game. Man, crazy, crazy fight. This was a wild one. This was a wild one indeed. One of them could have at least brought the Vlad Isabella colors. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell someone to do that in the Grand Finals, yeah. I'll tell someone to do that. I mean, even still, it's, it's not going to make that big of a difference. So, Super Team wins it. We have a dreaded VM Grand Finals. It's going to be Super Team against the uh, the Varus Academy. And we are going to go in the Bone Zone. It's just going to be a knockdown, drag out, undead fight. And that's how it's going to roll. 
yeah. That was that was some that was some stuff. So taking a look. Isabella did pretty good, 1,400. Blood Knights, uh, some good performances, 1,500, 2,001. One of them didn't do so hot. Bone Giant got 2,100. Let's compare that to the big Sphinx. Yeah, 3,700 on that Sphinx. He was definitely a harder carry. And I think that like microcosm of like a situation was really what made the difference. Well played. Well played. You you got, you guys think you're confused now? You ready to be more confused as we, we get to the grand finals here? Because that's what's going to happen. All right, so the super team will claim victory. And we have a VM Grand Finals. Let's go to the web browser, show you guys the works. And this is it. Yeah, we've had some fun teams today. Unfortunately, it's all Ogre now, got eliminated early. That was one I really wanted to see. They lost to the Terracotta Rats, but um, man, crazy stuff. If we're looking back at all the... We have an Elf team, we have an Undead. We have an Elf team, we have a Chaos. Undead, uh, Chaos, Chaos... Uh, Chaos. No, Undead. Uh, I believe these... I can't remember what they played. Yeah, and then we had an Elf team here. So we had some variants, but really, Chaos and Undead seem to be very popular in this format. Yeah. All right, so we're going to be setting up the final lobby here. So let's go ahead and switch on over to the Alliances menu. And uh, we can stay here. So let's just go ahead and get Void Lols and company to join this lobby. So let me go ahead and tag them here. Uh, join our lobby we're in now. All right, so we'll tag him and get in there. And we'll get the finals going. Pillar of Bone. It's the map, the Bone Zone, baby. We're taking it to the Bone Zone, which is going to be quite a circus for this format. Super Team vs. Varus Academy. All right. So we'll wait for them to join and we'll get this party started. The end times are upon us. Yeah, I can't remember who won the last one, honestly. I think I have it in my Hall of Fame. Let me go ahead and see. Did I add this to the Hall of Fame? No, I don't think we've added this format to Hall of Fame. We could do that. I think it's worth it. Yeah, we'll do Grand Alliances Hall of Fame. Uh-huh. And uh, can somebody tell me who won the last one? I think it might have actually been an undead team. I'm not sure. Did my game just crash? Let me go ahead and see. Yes, it did. Okay. No worries. My game did just crash. So I'm going to refire that bad boy up. And we'll get ready here for the grand finals of today's tournament. Master Corner Campers. Yeah, that was one of the teams. Yeah, pretty fun name. Beastman and Skaven won last time. Thank you. Yeah. I'll have to go back and check. I'm going to update it because I run a Hall of Fame in my Discord where we keep track of like all the uh, winners of uh, the major tournaments I put on. So yeah, b Spence Gaben won last time. So Chaos won last time, yeah. I think it was b Spence Gaben versus Dwarves and Dwarves and Bretonia, I think in the grand finals. I don't think Undead even made it to the finals last time. Yeah. Skaven and Beastman won the last one. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate your help, Attila. Yeah, Undead kind of got crumped last time, if I remember correctly. I think they didn't even make it to the top four. Yeah, it just kind of depends on the teams that sign up, you know? Like that really shapes the meta. All right, so getting into a lobby here. We're back in. And let's go ahead and minimize here. Looks like we're all set. In one sec. Just messaging the players. And the Pillar of Bone calls in the night. So do I have the scorecards updated? Looks like we do. Let's go ahead and switch on over to the lobby and prepare for the final battle to decide the fate of Middle-earth. Who will win this day? Uh, do you think Joe has a Joe has a shot at the next Faction Wars? Joe? Who's Joe? Who are you referring to? Uh, Faction Wars are a qualifier. So basically, I will be running a qualifier soon, either this weekend or next. Probably the following weekend. Um, I'm going to take the wife out this weekend maybe go on a little trip or something but um yeah it's it's an open qualifier so anybody can play yeah all right so players can start when they're ready void lulls you cannot play b-spin <laughs> no b-spin for you not today and uh looks like we're fine just gonna wait for the players to set we're on the pillar of bone a pretty small map but you know we've had bigger maps today 
Oh, you got me. You got me good. Ricardo coming in with the, the classic jokes. Yeah, that's an old school one, man. And Jack says, hey, Turin, I've been watching your AOE 4 vids. How much better slash different is it from other AOE games? So the only other ones I played... Uh... <laughs> I got him. <laughs> that's so good. I thought, I thought it, for a second, I thought it might be a Cotton Eye Joe reference that was going to be coming in. Uh, Age of Empires 4 is really good. I enjoy it. I played Age of Empires 2 a lot as a kid, but I didn't play Age of Empires 3, so I have no reference there. But uh, I think it's going to be an amazing game. I'm going to do my best to make a strong esports community for it. And uh, that's that. It's going to be great. Yeah. Walked right into that one. Uh, Davy Jones, I would follow the AOS rules for sure, but there's not enough. Um... I have some good ideas for greenskins though too. Like what I'm gonna probably do is add to the greenskin alliance. They can bring a goblin sub faction, so they can bring the crooked moon. They have to bring all goblin units, but then they're allowed to bring campaign units. So the arachnoc spider and the armored squig hoppers and like the super squigs and like things like that. So I'm definitely gonna be um, adding some spice to this format. Like I want to entice some weird alliances. All right, so, I mean, you guys have seen this. I don't really need to get too technical about things. We have the Sphinx here. We got Setra the Imperishable, a casket here. And honestly, this team just has more Ushapti Great Bows. They have less big, scary SEMs. They don't have the big Sphinx, but they do have the double White Kings with Scabs Great. So there's a fair amount of play there. A fair amount of play. Didn't Age of Empires 3 have much smaller armies, though? I feel like the armies in Age of Empires 4 get pretty big. Like, those 200-200 stacks are quite massive. Yeah. I know T90 covers Age of Empires 2. He didn't actually put up any videos of Age of Empires 4. Like, I was going to his channel seeing if he would cover it when the beta was up, but uh, he didn't do anything for it. Spirit of the Law did quite a few. But, um, yeah, in terms of, like, Age of Empires 4 content. I mean, he might just stay with Age of Empires 2. Who knows? Yeah. He doesn't seem to cover 3 either, so perhaps. I would definitely love to play some games. Amazingly Broken Greenskin Faction do it. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun. So we will have an FFA after this. This is the grand finals. This is uh, the $50 prize split between the two players so they can get gift cards, whatever they feel like getting, and do their business. So let us know your predictions, guys. Who's going to win, the undead or the undead? Will it be Super Team or will it be the Varus Academy? I doubt Age of Empires 2 community. Yeah, they'll probably stay in Age of Empires 2 for sure. It, it's, it's got a pretty strong uh, community. Plus, they have the Red Bull sponsorship. You know, Age of Empires 2 is sponsored by Red Bull. With the big uh, the big events right they put down like a massive prize pool so like if age of empires 4 can pull a similar sponsorship like a major corporate sponsor to like put on like a huge event like the wolo low cup i think we could make it pretty big and i think that's very possible yeah i think that's very very possible yeah yeah oh he was covering the red bull stuff in germany while it was available oh that makes sense that's why he didn't put anything up yeah yeah, it was kind of weird timing for the stress test. I know they had the huge Age of Empires 2 event, and then uh, the stress test like took place the same weekend, which was very odd. Yeah. Definitely going to be an undead victory. Yeah, 100%. This is the grand final, and we literally have like the two exact same teams. Slightly different. I mean, this team here, if we look at uh, Lunacy's team, they do... I wish I could like just make them all like super yellow and these guys like super red. That would actually be kind of a cool feature like to talk to a Creative Assembly about, like... Having like defined team colors in two v twos, I feel like it wouldn't be that hard to implement. Yeah, but like, yeah, I've seen I've seen that guy's channel, Hammond. I've been looking at a bunch of Age of Empires channels. Yeah, he did quite a bit. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it's it's too bad that it's too bad that the events coincided with one another. You think the undeath will win? We'll find out. Davy Jones, thank you for all you do for the community. Thank you so much for the uh, kind words, my friend. It looks like they're just deploying, just kind of back and forth, just some casual maneuvering. The forces of Super Team here are uh, in a pretty defensive posture. We got two Great Bows and a Casket facing off against Triple Eight Great Bows with no Casket. So the Casket advantage does go to the Super Team, which means they can probably force the uh, Void Laws and Lunacy Alliance, the Varus Academy, to advance up and push. So we'll see. A little bit of lag. Shouldn't be too bad. Hopefully it's not too bad. Let me know if it is an issue. Oh, there was another beta for Call of Duty that day as well. Yeah, there's a lot going on. I know. Pretty cool. 
that that and like the prize pool for the Wololo Cup is massive. It's like uh something like what a hundred grand I think that Red Bull puts up. That's so insane. And it's on like the Red Bull Gaming Channel. Like, yeah, like that's really damn cool. I I hope that if we cover Age of Empires four, we could like do something similar. That'd be really fun. All right, so the battle is underway. There will be a little bit of lag. Obviously, I'm connecting with, uh, I believe all four of these players are in uh, Eastern Europe or in Russia. So there is going to be a little bit of a connection issue potentially, but it seems like it's okay so far. So Shopti Grapos do get the Nero's Incantation. Pretty cool play there by Void. Void Law is able to buff that bad boy up so he can get the optimal trading. Casket of Souls, I don't really know how well the Casket of Souls shoots into uh, these type of units. I, I It used to before it got nerfed. It got buffed and it was super OP. And then it got nerfed. So before it got nerfed, though, it was pretty good against like trolls and things like that. Yeah, it was pretty damn good. Vladimir, I'm sorry, man. You got to watch the stream. You got to watch the stream. So we shopped you great bows going in. Blasting into the Chosen of the Gods. Getting some work in there. Speaking of prize pools, like that's one of the biggest like things. Like in Total War, it's it would be nice to get much bigger prize pools. But the biggest issue in the Total War community is like... The, the community made rules and the fact that the game itself isn't a closed environment and it's really open to abuses and bugs. So like there still are a lot of bugs in the game. So for us to have like a major event with like a huge prize pool like that would be problematic and there could be a lot of drama with it. Whereas like a game like Age of Empires, it doesn't exist. There's closed victory conditions, there's capture points, there's wonders, there's, there's very clear and concise victory conditions. So you don't need to worry about that. And like you don't need to enforce any rules on the players. They just play the game. That's, that's our biggest problem. That is our biggest problem for sure. Battle's underway though. This is going to be a very technical, scrappy battle, I'm sure. Uh, Super team taking up a very, very defensive posture in the corner. Um, they have one, two, three, four, five skeleton archers. And the other team actually has no skeleton archers. So, you know, if Void Lulz and his homie Lunacy here have to advance, they're going to be taking quite a bit of a DAC in the face. As long as this defensive formation can be maintained and uh, do their thing. What got nerfed? We were talking about Caskets of Souls. So Casket of Souls actually was a very, very, you know, weak unit at one point. It was actually on my list of the worst units in the game like two or three years ago. Then it got buffed to the point where it just like was like nuking everything. Cavalry, uh, monsters, infantry units, like infantry. It was just brutal. And then it got nerfed down to like a place where it's very comfortable now. Very, very comfortable. Just tuned back in. Yeah, Evan. No, it is the Haggard who shopped you duel. Yeah, this is this is just just pure misery here. Uh, Chosen of the Gods. Yes, just juking the shots. There's invocations to bring those up. It's funny because this is a mirror duel with like a clan too. And they're all like in the same discord, like battling each other. This is a VM clan here. So they're all hanging out and uh, doing their business. Shop to Great Boy Ammunition for Void is running a little bit low. Whereas it's being saved. You can see Shvercrosm and Tank are kind of saving their ammo and just trying to waste the ammo of the other team. In doing so, they're just going to wait till their, till their opponent advances. And then they're going to be unleashing their payloads. They can use invocations and different things like that to like keep their uh, chosen to the gods healthy, keep them nice and happy, happy bone boys. But uh, for the most part, just juking those shots right now. That's pretty much it. Both players showing their savvy. I've always felt had mixed feelings about juking shots. You know, I feel like it should be a little bit harder to do because sometimes like some units just like simply just cannot be used on a high level because you could just juke their shots. But like it's necessary too because if you can't juke shots, like things like Bone Giants and Luminarchs would just like absolutely dominate, right? So it, it's a, it's a bit of a complex issue in this game. Like in uh, like for example, in the most recent Age of Empires four we played, like you can't juke archer shots, but you can juke artillery shots. It's kind of interesting. Whereas in previous Age of Empires games, I believe in Age of Empires two, you can actually juke archers and things like that. It's very very common on the uh, higher level. Yes, loser has to clean the clan's toilet, and yeah, perhaps so. So Lunacy pulling back with Isabella. It looks like some White Kings moving in for the Varus Academy. Eating some Archer Fire, uh, but not too much. They should be fine. With proper juking, they shouldn't take too much damage. But both teams are being very, very cagey right now. And there's a nice Casket shot. Beautiful. That Casket just nuked a bunch of Blood Knights. Actually killing six models. That's the value city right there. And I would imagine the Casket will continue to bombard in. Going after the Blood Knights here. We will see. Pretty healthy at this point. Still rocking 39. Could be easily healed up by an invocation. You know what I'm really shocked to see? I have some water real quick. My voice getting a little bit scratchy. Is we haven't seen a single Mortis Engine today. Like, Mortis Engines are really powerful. Especially, like, in big games, right? There's more for them to drain. But we haven't seen a single Mortis Engine. So far, the Super Team still a very defensive posture. They've moved up their zombies to kind of screen out here in the front. 
And the Ushapi Grapo is going to be just going downtown into the Black Knights here, it would look like, or maybe into the other Ushapti units. Isabella and the Vampire of Death for Super Team could get a little bit crazy up in the sky, honestly. Uh, Super Team does have the advantage in terms of their flying air force here. Although, no, there's Felbats. So Felbats with Isabella plus a little bit of ground support from Ushapti Grapos might be able to do it. Yeah, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Six Blood Knights, and yeah, one. Yeah, no, they, they got they got some work in there. Hey, Sarmation, how you doing? Haven't seen you in a while, man. Hope you're doing good. You coming back to play the game again? So Casket of Souls still shooting in. Looks like the uh, Void Lulls and Lunacy are slightly losing the range trade. I mean, it's pretty close. These guys are, are pretty beat up. Unfortunately, in this game, we don't have the tools from a Spectator or Caster to see the Winds of Magic for both teams. That would actually be a very, very valuable multiplayer tool. If Creative Assembly, if you're listening, if you guys want to like really do a solid... For multiplayer casting uh, if you could add in some spectator tools like seeing winds of magic and hero abilities and items that'd be really cool if there was like you know i could see the winds of magic for both players like up here where my mouse is or something or like in the bottom center like right below the bounce of power that would be really goddamn cool and like items you know how like in league of legends like or like other games like that warcraft 3 casting you can see the items like up in the top like in their cooldowns that would be really useful that'd be really really fun but you know just a wish list item ammo's pretty okay like Void and uh, and Lunacy are being very conservative with their ammo, but so are Tank and uh, Shverkrasm here. A little bit low in this Ushapti, but this one's healthy. And I would imagine Invocations are still very, very much in the back pocket. Yeah, no more Descensions. Yeah, no more Descensions. I'm surprised. We haven't seen, like, a Vampire Coast uh, Vampire Count army today either, which would have been strong. I think Vampire Coast plus Tomb Kings could also be a very powerful combo. You're a little bit all in on the ranged, but you can certainly get a lot of summons with like Noctilus. You still get invocations and uh, could also go with like Luther Harkin. Also a rewind feature. You know, speaking of rewind features, guys, hopefully you don't mind. I'm just kind of ranting while these guys like have their skirmishing phase. You can still see what's happening. But um, we actually, when we were doing Creative Assemblies uh, Ever Chosen and we were out there casting, that was something we talked about. And apparently rewinding is like a very, like the way their engine works like rewinding is like almost impossible to do. Like they'd have to rework like the whole base engine of like how it works with their uh, their replays and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, so we'll see. Hopefully Siege Battles will be fixed in game three. Uh, the lack, we'll see. So some light archer fire shooting in, going after these zombies. It looks like the, the battle's heating up. Things getting a little bit more intense. You know, it's funny. We picked the Pillar of Bone as a map because we were like, yeah, man, this is going to be close quarters. They're going to fight. But apparently I didn't put them on a small enough map. I probably should have just put them onto the uh, onto the, the spirit essence of chaos or just like an arena map where they start like right into each other's face or something. That would have been pretty funny. Casket shooting in. It looks like it does miss. I think it was going after the horseman there. It looks like there is some mild aggression coming in from Lunacy and uh, Void Lull's army. One thing they have the advantage of, I think they have more infantry quality because I only see one Graveguard Great Weapon here. Whereas Lunacy and Void Lulls, I think, have like three or four. So that is something to uh, consider there. Caskets blasting in. Here they come. Going to be going after the Graveguard Great Weapons there. Pretty nice. If they could just alternate on the Graveguard and various other elite units with that casket, they could certainly get some good value. Such as the Imperishable juking back and forth. Looks like he's just trying to make sure he's not getting shot by these attacks here. This is like the cagiest, trolliest thing ever told i know andy called it in chat andy 11 our, our glorious mod here was like yeah you should have done the the spirit essence of chaos that would have been proper so right if the siege rework is good enough will we see siege battle tournaments probably not it's really hard to balance but i mean if it does present itself as a good format for tournaments we'll try it obviously in game three we will be getting access to um domination mode which is going to be the new pvp mode which will prevent games like this from happening right because there's objectives so players will have to go and you know go after those objectives and play that so Oh, Felix, you think this is a boring final? You've seen nothing. Have you seen the grand finals of uh, a Faction War style event, which is double vampire counts? That, at least there's some like back and forth skirmishing and micro in this. Watching like two Mortis Engine armies just rub their meat against each other is nothing compared to that. Yeah, it's still going, man. It's still going. This has been a 10 minute battle and the front lines haven't even clashed yet. So, Skeleton Archer is getting work in there. We're using a fair amount of ammo. They need to focus down the Grave Guard though. That's gonna be the biggest thing. Get the Blessed Legion, get the Caskets, focus on the Graveguard units, live long and prosper. Yeah, it looks like they're shooting at the King of Kesha's Scorpion Legion right now. But yeah, they have Silver Shields, I think. You don't want to be shooting them. You want to be shooting the Graveguard Great Weapons. So we have a Haggard Air Force fight of some sorts. It looks like uh, Super Team was battling the Bats of uh, the Varus Academy. No Black Coaches either. Man, 
Some weird shit. Some weird, weird stuff. But yeah, this is a good focus fire here by Schwerkrasm and Tank. Shooting into the Graveguard with great weapons, sundering their armor, bringing them down. That is one of their big deficits, right? They don't have the infantry quality, so taking them down is going to be incredibly essential. Zombies will, of course, tank for some time. A beautiful scab scrape coming down there from Lunacy. Gross. The Blessed Legion doesn't lose any models, but they just get their HP absolutely shrekt. Uh, Ushapti Grapos now for the Varus Academy appear to be shooting into the Blood Knights in the back of tank and uh, getting some good work in, but ammo is about out. The other team, however, I believe has a lot of ammo via their Skeleton Archers. Their Ushapti Grapos, I'm not sure where they went. I think they pulled back and they have a little bit of ammo, but yeah, the Skeleton Archers mainly are the last bit of, uh, of hope here. Oh no, the Slanesh bots are here. Smite them quickly. So frontline fighting is going down. We have the Setra on Setra fight. We have vampiric characters engaging on all fronts. Sorry if there's a little bit of background noise. My brother is a musician and unfortunately he lives next door and uh, he doesn't care that I record. He just blasts his music. So that's how we roll, man. That's how we roll. Zombies and Graveguard great weapons getting shots. Still taking quite a bit of damage to the Skeleton Archers tee off. And now we have an absolutely incoherent just mess here in the middle as the Tomb Kings and Undead just rub their bones together and uh, we are just going to have absolutely no idea what's going on. Looks like the Cetra is taking some work. Particular uh, play paint. Particular play paint. Thank you for becoming a new member. Is that supposed to be a tongue twister or is it just naturally one? Yeah. Let me know. So just big pit fight. You can see Cetra for Void Lols is battling the Cetra of Sphere Crossum. Uh, the super team does have the advantage of having the big Sphinx, whereas the uh, Varus Academy does not. But the Varus Academy has the two whites on the ground. But it looks like the vampire on the ground, the death vampire for tank, is going to be dying there. So certainly changes the dynamic of that fight. Now the undead forces of the Varus Academy probably going to be pulling back after getting that victory and killing that vampire of death. Vampires are expensive characters. And they certainly cause some problems. So... Looking around, more archer shooting, just continuing to blast into the Graveguard Great Weapons. It looks like some backline pressure has formed. Uh, although Tank holding it back pretty well with his spears. We have Blood Knights in the backfield for Lunacy, kind of defending the Ushapti Grapos. I think if Tank could get his Blood Knights back and around and hammer into those Grapos, that'd be a really nice free pick. Isabella back in the sky. We're having an Isabella cat fight. It is going to be Isabella versus Isabella. And the hunt is indeed on, whereas Cetra on the ground battled his uh, evil twin, the alternate universe Cetra. And both teams are kind of just getting a bit of a respite right now and pulling back. Although it does look like Super Team might be pulling a little bit ahead on the Bounce of Power. They have done a lot of damage and uh, a lot of the, the good infantry units are quite crumped. I believe their Blood Knights are in good shape too. Yeah, we got 43 Blood Knights here for Tank. Finishing off the Black Knights of Lunacy, which have dove into the backfield. Shafir Krasim able to stabilize those Ushapti Grapo. And uh, Tank's Isabella is back up in the sky. Feeling pretty good. Honestly, you know, what's really been carrying the Super Team today is the uh, the dreaded Sphinx of Usef here. It's it's just been really helping them win the monster stools in these undead mirror matches, which is so funny. Like, that one thing just is such a problem, right? Because the White Kings are cool. Scab Scrapes were super clutch in this matchup, but I don't know if they're going to be able to overcome the big Sphinx with healing. So Isabella catfight up in the sky. It looks like uh, Tank's Isabella is being chased by Lunacy's Isabella. And uh, yeah, you want to run. You're a little bit lower health. You know, just live long and prosper there. Tank piling in with Blood Knights and Skeleton Spears should be able to buffer back most of the forces of the Varus Academy. As Super Team appears to be in a more commanding position. They have the big Sphinx. They're living their best life. And it looks like uh, Cetra does pull back, as does the big Sphinx. Got to be trying to peel these Ushapti Grapos by finishing off the Nekar Horsemen. Bellbats from uh, Lunacy, though, doing a good job shutting down Super Team's Ushapti Grapo back here. Very, very scrappy fight. Very, very scrappy fight indeed. The dreaded Undead Alliance is here. Here they come. It's actually the Imperishable diving in and doing battle with the Necromancer. A little breath attack right there. Von Hell's Dance Kebab is active. Is that AoE? It looks like it was an AoE cast right there. But I still think Super Team is slowly claiming victory. Their monster squad, the Monstars, are just much stronger with the Big Sphinx. And also their Blood Knight counts, I think, is healthier. Let's go ahead and see. So Tank's got 40 Blood Knights left. Uh, he's got 18 Blood Knights here who just got an invocation. The Casket of Souls... For Super Team and Schwerkrasm is also bombarding in and getting really good AoE damage into this blob. So I really don't see any way for the forces of uh, of the Varus Academy to get back into this. Unless there's a big micro blunder. This White King is about to go down. Lunacy's White King gets trampled by Cetra of the Super Team. Looks like a curse does go down as one of the uh, Tomb Kings characters does get a little bit beat up there. We still have the cat fight up in the sky. Lunacy's Isabella is still chasing Tank's Isabella, but he has not been able to get it. Tank has had some pretty good micro there. And now the big Chungus Sphinx is just going to probably carry the day here. He is just going to go deep 
just absolutely deep and just cut apart this White King. And then, you know, what happens from there is it's basically Void Lol Cetra versus the Sphinx and the other Cetra, and that's probably going to be Game Blouses. Pancakes will be made, and that will be uh, all she wrote. Hmm. Too much bone rubbing? Yeah, there's a lot of bone rubbing going on. In the previous, uh, last event, the Undead did not have a good run, but today they were very dominant. I just, again, think it was based on the two most common teams today were Chaos Alliances and Undead Alliances. And I feel like the Chaos Alliance kind of struggles against Undead. So I think that was a big reason why we saw Undead Dominance. We didn't see Order Tides. Uh, we didn't really see too many. We saw a couple Elf teams, but Elf teams have historically done pretty well against Undead too. With like Tempest and good SEM play and like using Phoenixes and Larry and things like that. But really, based on what we saw in today's meta, uh, you know, that's why the Undead were so dominant. I don't think they're like particularly OP. I just think that the combos that they faced off against were really, really favorable for them. Because, like, look, if you go Skaven Chaos, which was a lot of, like, we saw, like, two or three of those today. Skaven are weak against, you know, Vampire Counts, and, uh, you know, Tomb Kings are good against them, too. And Chaos is also not very good against Vampire Counts. So it's, like, it's a little bit rough. Like, whereas had it been, like, Beast Ben Skaven, you could have gotten, like, some Gorgons... Uh, the Blood Brute Behemoth, some big fightiness, maybe Torox the Brass Bull. The last Grand Alliances tournament was actually won by uh, Torox the Brass Bull teaming up with someone. I can't... Yeah, it was, it was Skaven and Beastman actually won the last event. So at this point, Void Laws has dropped out. Our suffering has ended, and today's champion is going to be the Super Team. VM claiming victory in their duel. It's going to be Tank and Schwer Krasm claiming the final victory here in this match. Undead only tournament for Halloween? No, please, God, no. It is over. That is a great victory. And now, as we promised to the Great Willow, we will be doing some FFAs to close out the event, as we always do. We'll go from there. Should be fun. Yeah, not much to say here. I think the big factor was the big Schwer Krasm Sphinx. Like, that literally won them so many games today and was very clutch. And also, Tank's Blood Knight play was very good, too. 2,700 and 1,200 on the Blood Knights. Can't complain about that. So... The victor for today, let's go ahead and get on over to ye old web browser. Is going to be... No, no more... No, no, not an undead FFA. I mean, if they're all different, it's okay, as long as they're not like mirror matches. So, Super Team will be victorious. GG, well played. The tournament hath concluded. They will be winning the $50 cash prize, which they can redeem through either Steam or just PayPal, whatever they prefer. So first place is Super Team, second place is Varus Academy, and a third, a three-way tie between the Terracotta Rats and the Council of Thirteen. GG, well played. And now it is time for the dreaded FFA to end all FFAs. Oh, we're not have, using that lobby dynamite because I'm going to be playing. I, I want to party. This is going to be Turin FFA. Password is one two three four. Come have some fun. <clears throat> yes, yes. Free for all battle. We can do the Shrine of Cain for this map. We haven't done this one in quite some time. Oh boy. What a what an event today. It was fun. It got a little bit grindy at the end, but the earlier rounds were really interesting to see. Yeah. Hopefully we get some folks in here. So we got Dino Mike in here once again. Dino Mike able to make both lobbies. Very happy about that. Let's go with Beastmen. I'm gonna play some Beastmen this time around. The Bray Herd cometh. They come to unleash their fury upon the world. All right. Very good. Let's close all these browsers so there's less shit all over the desktop. We got Bovine Lion, Dynamite, and Percy the Pigeon. All right. Map set. Particular play paint. You might need to add me on Steam. I'm not sure. But regardless, uh, if you guys want to play in like FFA games in the future... Let me go ahead and get you links to the discords. This is where we usually do them. And this way, you if, if you can't see the lobby, you can add me as a friend and uh, on Steam and we can get it all straightened out and everything like that. So here's my multiplayer discord. Come join. Uh, it's going to be covering Age of Empires as well as Total War. So if you guys are interested in either title, we'll be running them both out of there. And yeah, should be good. So the Bray Herd, the Moo Men cometh. Yeah, the Beastmen need some love. We didn't, we didn't get too much Beastmen action today. Um, so let's go ahead and get the army blocker up so I can block this goodness here and we'll, uh, we'll get the, the dreaded stream FFA underway. <clears throat> so we got Bretonia, Wood Elves, and Dynamite with the Pirates of Sartosa. All right. I wish Torox had Vanguard deployment. I know that doesn't really make sense, but I wish he did. 
Yeah, I wish I wish the brass bull had a little Vanguardo action. Oh no, that's a Doom Bull. Got to bring the the big Chungus Bull. Come on, come on now. Whew. Okay, so aside from this, what are we going to get? We'll probably get you because you're just universally quite good. No ogres. I got to put on unit caps so people don't meme with ogre units. And um, aside from that, let's go ahead and get. You're gonna miss the town center bell noises. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. The bell noises are gone and lost forever. Some centigore throwing axes. Probably some cows would be good. And uh, what else do I want to get? Do I want to like? I want to rush someone. Like, I want to just go all in and rush someone, but I also want to have, a, like, a decent, sustainable force that isn't just going to get owned. Get a big Chungus here. What items does Gorbel have? Oh, he's got some cool stuff. Yeah, nothing really worth bringing, though, in my opinion. As far as spells go, what is going to be good against all of these guys? Shadow seems like it's something that could be universally good against all of these fine gentlemen. So look at that. And Enfeebling Foe. Yeah, that was that was some some ferocious battles we had today. We have them. We have our SEM squad well in check. Now we can get some cheap chaff units. We'll get some infantry. I might be forced into like a normal head up fight, so I want to have some stuff that like is somewhat normal. Although probably honestly with Beastmen going like full mobility is just straight up better. Yeah, it's hard to say. All right, brass bulls, you really need all those abilities. I don't think we need this. Let's go ahead and get you, and we are ready. All right. You know, I'm a little bit disappointed because this build just feels like so standard and normal. You know, I'm kind of like looking at it like, ah, eh, it's just like, feels like a normal build. <clears throat> Bro leg, yes, the big Chungus is here. The brass bull comes. I need some water, man. Adding in Steam. Yeah, if you just add me on Steam, you can see my name. It's Pierogi Lord, and I have a picture of Limp Biscuit. So you could just add me on Steam, and, uh, and then I'll, I'll get you going on there. SEMs, well, we're, you, we're just using unit caps, so it's a little bit less restrictive than tournament rules, but it's it's like in FFAs, we're, we're pretty chill about it. Just whatever you're allowed to bring with unit caps, you can go ahead and bring. Yeah. Could go for some spawn rush action. Yeah. A lot of fun ideas. And my voice is a little bit worn out today. I don't know why. It's any given Sunday, man. Any given Sunday. I just got back from taking a shower. Who won the tournament? Sipe. The tournament was won by the Undead. The Undead Horde has won. The first one was won by the Chaos Alliance, but the second one was won by the Undead today. So the Order Tide have yet to score a victory, but hopefully we'll see some Order Tide back in future events. What is this new spawn of Nurgle? That's actually my dog, yeah. My, do my, my late dog who passed away. He's the lovely Wookiee. All right, so let's go ahead here and get rid of the army blocker. There you go. We're all good. So the Shrine of Cain is a pretty weird FFA map. It has like a ton of low ground positions. It's very, very awkward. Hey, Anticity, how's it going? We just finished the main tournament. Now we're just doing the classic FFAs to close things out. Uh, we do have the dreaded Dino Mike over here. So maybe we'll do some battle with Dino Mike. Yeah, that'd be fun. We'll see. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to play it by ear. Beastmen, have, I have some Vanguard, but most of my army is not a Vanguard based. So... All right, Brass Bull, we have our SEM squad, our like, goon squad here. We got the Chariot in three, four, and then these guys can be... Um, you know what? They can they can run with Torox. Oh, we don't have anyone in group one. Shit, okay. So I guess we just put you guys in group one. Three and four. Looks good to me. Jestikar, bless this ravaged payday for Sigmar. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Bless this ravaged streamer. All right, I'm going to ready up. We got we to gotta put the pressure on our, our friends here. Could be some wild-ass vanguards in the middle. We got um, got Dynamike here with Sartosa. We have what appears to be Argolin over there. And then up on the top, we have Bretonia. Bretonia would be a good fight for me. I have a lot of anti-Bretonian stuff. If they went cavalry, uh, there's going to be two FFAs. We'll do this one and one more afterwards, yeah. I see your friend's request, particular. So I'll get that. Uh, I'll just do that right now. Screw it. I'm just going to minimize for a second. Hopefully the game doesn't start and I just get like ambushed and my army dies. And uh, cool. Where are that? Where art thou? Hold on. Oh, for some reason, there you are. Cool. All right. 17 seconds till we start. 
We got a nasty goon squad though, man. Like Gorbel, Torox, Bloodbrute Behemoth, uh, Butchers of Kalkengard. Pretty good sustainability too, because those units do indeed uh, regenerate. So, yeah. Thanks, Turin. Carrying me on your back. <laughs> hey, man, I got you. Password just one, two, three, Loopy. If you want to try and get into the next one. So a little bit of Vanguard play, although this is a little bit of a scary choke. Like I might, I might have a bad time here. But if I go on the high ground, I might just get just just crumbed here. So let's go ahead and like get you guys down here, here, and here. Let's keep it safe with the Centaurs here. And the big Chunga squad is coming. Yes, move my minions, move. So what do we got? Cannons, we got crabs, we got Queen Bess. Ooh, that's actually some scary shit, man. He's got a good army. Bretonia has a massive air force. Ah, shit, okay. Hold on. Bretonia might just gank me with a huge air force, so I gotta be really careful. Because if I'm, like, attacking coast and then, like, the Bretonian air force just descends on me, I just, like, straight up die. I just, I just get, I just get banished into another dimension. Okay, let's juke those shots, pull back a little bit if we can. Let, let them think they can shoot at us happily, which they certainly can, to an extent. Get the raiders, the raiders. Raiders can go in group 5. You guys just kind of chill out here. Pull back these units and uh, pull you guys back too. Yeah, I gotta watch out. This this Bretonian Air Force, I could beat them, I think, because I have spears and pretty good anti-large, but um, overall, it's like it's it's pretty sketchy. Oh my god, that group just got screwed up. Alright, there we go. Let's pull up behind you, pull up behind you, pull up behind you. And Raider, Raiders should be able to keep them at bay. Like, with good micro. Oh my god, Queen Bess is shooting at me too. Ah, oh, shit, this is getting bad. Argolin's coming across. They have a Glade Lord, it looks like. Which is certainly cool. Um, a little bit of damage being taken here. You can see some of the Sartosa Militia were nuked by something. Probably Dwellers Below. Yeah, it looks like a Dwellers Below. Keep going after the Bretonians. Although they're just probably going to keep skirmishing against me. Do I just go over here with this force? Yeah, I think so. Keep the throwing axes. Keep the pendulums. Yeah. Because Queen Bessie's just going to keep dropping steaming loads on us here. And that's not going to be fun. So, so, yeah, thankfully they're just Sartosa Militia, too. So it shouldn't be, like, the worst thing in the world to break. Let's move in here, see what we can do. Drop a little bit of Leaven. I also don't want to get sandwiched by Wood Elves. Password's 1, 2, 3, I think. If that doesn't work, then it's 1, 2, 3, 4. It should be 1, 2, 3. All right. Got some Sartosa Militia. Getting, uh, getting ready to jam. Let's drop this, see if he's watching. I mean, I feel like the Pendulum is not even worth it on those guys. They're just, like, so low value. Yeah, I mean, it still did some damage. Let's go ahead and just bull rush in here. Let's bull rush. Let's bull rush. The raiders can pull in and just, like, move up behind. Because he's being attacked from the front, too, and Sartosa Militia have pretty bad armor piercing, so I'm not, like, too concerned. As a matter of fact, let's, like, hug the bottom, because that'll stay out of their concave of fire. And we can get another pendulum soon. Like, if we could just get on these crabs. He does have some zombies here, but it looks like Bretonia is, like, getting super aggressive, too. Uh, zombies are being moved into positions. So that's 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 some good play. All right, let's move you guys in. Just hammer them real quick. Raiders to start killing the zombies. Pull back the Chungus squad. It looks like I'm being hit with something. Yeah. All right. So we got the attack. Should break those Sartosa militia pretty quick. Get our spears moving in, and then we can get our big goon squad to move in there and start doing the work of the gods. All right. So we are in. We have broken that position. Let's go ahead and see if we can like get any of these Bretonian archers when they're not paying attention. This is the fate of Static Coast. If you play like Coast like defensively like this, you tend to just get swarmed. All right. So going. Let's get you guys down here and pile in. We should be able to kill these crabs pretty quick. We got another Pendulum, which is pretty fat. Chasing back the Bretonian archers. Um, let's go ahead and like help Coast a little bit by attacking the Bretonians. So we'll just get like some throwing axe play there. While our beatdown squad just goes here. Um, what does this do? Brass body. I could use that, but he's, he's barely taking any damage here. Not too big of a problem. All right, Sartosa Militia are just chilling. I don't know what the Wood Elves are doing. It looks like they're coming up with a bunch of Dryads here. Dynamite's getting a lot of points, but he's also going to be expunged here from the game in a moment. Yeah, throwing weapon play on Pegasus Knight's quite good. Okay, let's actually Tokyo Drift through here and, and just jump on the uh, Queen Bess. All right, so Queen Bess, he's going to take it. We got the damage there. Let's go ahead and keep pulling in and just keep our Goon Squad moving. Raiders are doing good work. They're doing all right. Let's, let's move them up so they get a little bit of a better Arc of Fire. All right, Queen Bessie is paid. Bretonia just get nape shit with its flying air force. No surprises. And now my haggard goon squad shall continue on its reign, and we can move on to the carronade here. Claps on that bad boy. Spears get some free points there. And Queen Bessie has gone down, which is going to give us a lot of points. Our army has taken pretty minimal damage a little bit here and there. Really not too bad. The Bretonian air force is still going to be a pain. 
I need to keep my Centigors alive to deal with them. Alright, so get Bess. Let's get these Centigors down on the low ground. Let's get the Raiders over here. Spears, Spears, and Spears. Move, and uh, let's just save Wind's Magic for the Pendulums and things like that. Alright, so Raiders should be able to shoot at some of the Bretonian Flyers here. We should have some Spears in position to protect them as well, so let's set you guys up. Cravenoth Rama going down too. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty cool. Ooh, Bloodroot Behemoth, Behemoth getting focused down. That's Aranessa Salt Spite. Oh, that's why. That's why I'm taking damage. Okay, makes sense. Let's pull back the Goon Squad. We don't need to be overextended into these lines here. Let's just get some shit spears like fighting there. So they're actually landing here. Very, very bold play. Very, very bold play. Spears coming in. Spears pile in. And now the Bray Herd will return in full force. Looks like there's going to be an Awakening of the Woods there. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, let's see. These Bretonians might not be able to get away. Bloodroot Behemoth. Oh, it got caught in a net. Oh, Aranessa netted it down. Ouch, losing the Behemoth here early would suck pretty bad. Oh, come on, Behemoth. Yeah, he netted it and shot, I think. Very, very nice. The Behemoth might come back. It's hard to say. Let's go ahead and get this Paladin. Pop Brass Body in case there's a duel there. Uh, let's form ranks with some Spears. Keep harassing here and you guys get there. Throwing weapons, move over. And Bloodroot Behemoth might come back. It's, it's a little bit hard to say. I got some Pendulums I could drop too on Dino Mike here. Let's go ahead and see how we want to do this. Yeah, that, that net on the Behemoth was quite solid. And the Paladin we got. Torox got that booty. The Wood Elves are just getting a lot of pot shots here. Dino Mike's in a very, very cozy position. Pull back, pull back. We need to get away. My caster could be in danger. And uh, let's see how his guns are right now. All right, so we got Sartosa Militia. Pendulum them. All right, Bloodbrew Behemoth's back. We need to get it into melee so it can start healing. So we need to like just kind of keep it safe with our army. Got a little, little action there, which was nice. Pile in. Fight the Sartosa Free Company if we can. Reposition the Archers. Bloodroot Behemoth can kind of chill back, and we can degroup him for now. And uh, Dryads. Yeah, Dryads are cool. Let's, let's go fight some Dryads, get some free damage. Gorble, get in there. Centigors with throwing weapons. Maybe pull under. Try and get some damage where you can. Get the Chariots hammering, and uh, probably, honestly, the Dryads are our safest bet for healing the Bloodroot Behemoth. All right. So, where are the crabs? Aaron S is tanky. We could hammer the Sartosa Militia real quick. Let's get a little charge in their back. Bloodroot should be able to safely heal here. Our Minotaurs are healing. Looks like there's a big Haggard duel going up on the high ground, too. Let's move you guys over here. Did we get these Militia down? Not quite. And uh, what can we shoot? Looks like we got Rotting Prometheans. Pushers of Kalkengard are on their way. And the Sartosa Militia should be broken in a second. Cool. So Bloodroot, you go there. Fight here, buddy. Let's get our Goon Squad moving over. Let's finish them real quick. We need to pull the Throwing Axes back. We need some anti-air. We don't have much left. Thankfully, there's Dryads giving the dirty here. You know, I think it's time for Aranessa to pay the price for her insolence here. We're going to get the two bulls and just, just give, give her the horns. We're going to give the horns here pretty hard. All right. Form ranks, form ranks, form ranks. All right. Oh, the Spearfisher's net. Look at that. We're going in. Let's go ahead and get an Enfeebling Foe on Aranessa. We need to make sure we can actually win this duel. Gorbul getting some attacks in there. Let's go ahead and pop the Blood Beast. The Blood Beast. We're going to bring in the big, the big boy as well. We can bring some spears in. Shit's getting a little bit wild, actually. Yeah, we might need to kind of like restructure. Those damn dryads are sort of in the way here. Let's go ahead and get the minotaurs in there to deal it with it. All right, jumping in on Aranessa again. Minotaurs, go deal with them. Bloodroot Behemoth can uh, pile in and attack this overextended vampire character. Oh, Aranessa's getting her butt kicked now. Oh, yeah, Torox is just the alpha, the alpha predator there. Yeah, she's down for the count. Moving on over, we are doing good on points, but Bretonia still has a pretty unholy legion. Okay, so Dino Mike's out of the picture now. So the points for the other players are a little bit low, though. My caster died because I wasn't paying attention, which is great. Looks like the, the great stag lord able to get some blows there. All right, we're braced here. Let's brace. I don't know if that's going to matter much, but let's pile in and hammer them. The bovine lion. The caster did well, though. We used most of our wins of magic. Oh, Bretonia really wants to come in here. Yeah, they want it. Oh, God. Oh, man. Bloodroot. Bloodroot Behemoth got isolated. Oh, the humanity. This is a time for us to get some value back against them, though. Torox, you have any buffs? Not really. Okay. You attack here. Bloodroot's still getting some damage before he goes quietly. A lot of the Bretonian flyers are getting crumbed. Get you on him. Torox on homeboy here on King Lewin. You still have the Minotaurs. And yeah, okay, Flyers are taking a lot of damage. We've got a lot of Spears here, too. Spears, Pegasus Knights aren't super tanky. Okay, the Paladin is almost dead. Can we get him? Nope. Looks like he's going to squeak away, but probably just right into the hands of the Wood Elves. Slanesh is back. Slay, slay the Slanesh bot. 
That Wood Elf army is pretty scary, though, man. I don't think we can take that. We just need to get a lot of points, basically. All right, so let's go ahead and hammer into them. Can I have you shoot the Eternal Guard here? Yeah, those damn archers in the back are so problematic. Toroxa might just be able to goon here. Uh, brass body, brass body. Okay, we got the brass body off. He was being focused. So the butchers can just keep fighting in that case. We'll put them in group six. And Torox and company can just kind of do control. Let's move up here. Pull back across. Oh, I, I, I grouped I group, grouped incorrectly, damn it. Okay, let's put Torox and company in group six. There we go, all right. Are those spears? Yeah, they are. Shit, how many eternal guard are there? 68? Okay, we need to pull back and get a better engagement there. Come on, Torox! Mighty Chaos Cow! Let's go get some damage. Let's go hunting. It's hunting season, boys. All right, spears are moving in. Cows are, cows are going after the dryads. And we are on the hunt. Here it comes. I see you, mighty elven lord. Torox is, he's, he's hungry. He's hungry for prey. Oh no, I, I didn't have him selected. Thankfully, these aren't like wave watchers or anything, so yeah, it's not, it's not like too much damage. Yeah, looking pretty grim. If some Centigore throwing axes, we could like pull them in to help a little bit. Yeah, okay, let's loop around. The Minotaurs, let's have them jump on that Spell Singer, see if we can get some kills. Or a kill, I should say. Wood Elves might have a chance. I don't know how many points are left, but oof, yeah, it's going to be hard to get that character. Minotaurs might be able to get some damage on her, though. Go here. Torox does have the uh, Blood Beast, which will do like AoE fire damage. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. Get that character. Uh, able to juke us. The Super Beast. You guys know that song by Rob Zombie, Super Beast? It's like Torox's theme song. All right, let's go Brass Bull. Let's go, ooh yeah, oh yeah. Maybe maybe we got some, some play here. Come on, don't break, don't break. We got the dreaded sandwich on the Lord. Come on. Oh yeah, give it to me, Precious. Oh, Torox, get in there, kill some shit. Take that lord out. Blood Beast to knock away the other other threats. I can't quite click on it. Okay. Let's get there. We got some spears. The fight is on. Torox is getting some damage. We have gotten the Glade Lord very, very low, but unfortunately we have no other buffs. Let's go. Come on, Gorbel team. Oh yeah, we got we broke it. We broke it. Go. Get in there. Spears just fight random shit. We don't care. Uh butchers, you can help too. Oh, yeah, look at that. Torox going ape shit. So that gave us a lot of points. Bretonia is still trolling in the distance, too. Yeah. He's definitely causing some problems. Okay, Damsel of Life. Pretty good prey there. Torox is continuing to be just be an absolute punisher. Uh, value accrued so far. 4,200 on Torox, man. That's so good. Look at him just tanking these shots. I could be juking like an actually good player, but I'm just like too much of a potato. FFAs aren't for tryhard. Oh, Torox. Okay, let's get some damage, whatever. Oh, uh, oh yeah, Torox did give the horns, but now the Bretonians are going to claim vengeance. All right. I'm officially out of the game here. I have more or less nothing left, except these Minotaurs. Hey, look at these guys. That's, that's, that's nice. Oh, and Gorbul came back. Look at that. Maybe we can actually win a fight against these guys. Let's, let's form ranks. I think Torox might return. He's got 200 HP, not likely. He did really good, though. How much damage did Gorbel get this game? Gorbel got 1,700. That's pretty solid. All right, so let's just kind of form ranks. Is the stream lagging? Oh, I see some dropped frames. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's lagging right now. Damn. Okay. Hopefully, that'll pass in a second, guys. Sorry, it's just... It's just. It's about time to... I have to, like, literally call my internet provider, like, every couple months to have them fix fix the internet. Sorry, guys. I mean, you more or less know how this, this game is going to unfold here. Yeah, okay. Seems to have stabilized. Sorry about that. Oh, never mind. It's jumping back again. Torox returns. Now you're getting the true slideshow experience. Come on, buddies. Fight the good fight. Beat those Eternal Guard. Yeah. Okay. Looks stable. I'm looking right now. Sorry about the lag, guys. I think, I think it should... It's just my internet. I just looked, yeah. Man, these Eternal Guard are just insanely durable here. Like holding like champs. Yep, yeah, seems stable now. Go ahead and refresh if you're having still having problems. That should should solve the problem. Seventeen thousand points, man. King Luan's still going hard too. We just cannot break these Eternal Guard, man. Okay, finally, geez, we get the break on them. I was like fighting those guys the entire time. It was lagging. 
It started stuttering late anyways, don't worry. Yeah, it should be fine now. Okay, so we got the Eternal Guard down. The dreaded squad. We'll keep chasing them because we're just trying to get points to make sure we stay ahead. So, nobody is close enough to get get us, I think. I think it's just over. Yeah, my army just, like, breaks due to attrition and army losses. Passwords 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll do one more FFA. Yeah. But the next FFA is going to be, uh... Going to be a special one, and I'll show you guys why. It's We're probably going to allow campaign units. Yeah, so we're going to allow, like, campaign exclusive for the next one to see how effective they are. I'm going to play the Empire and bring, like, you know, the this tank and... Yeah, Eternal Guard earning their name, absolutely. So I am out, but we're pretty far ahead on points. Bovine Lion versus uh, Bretonia here. I think Bretonia really only has Lewin left. Yeah, it's just King Lewin, so... He's going to run into problems. If he doesn't land, his leadership will tank, and then it's just going to be GG. Yeah, it was a good game. It was a good scrap. We got we got a lot of points earlier. Our little goon squad was nice. It was a little bit sloppy with micro and a couple things, but... It's okay. I haven't really eaten today, so that's what I deserve. What's the status of the Cavalry fix patch? It's still in beta. Uh, I would imagine it'll be coming out in the next couple weeks. It seems like they've made some progress with it. Like, a lot of people are switching and trying tournaments on it and things like that. I haven't yet. Yesterday's Best of Seven was on it, though. But people seem to be happy. I mean, for anybody who's a you know competitive player who's tried it in chat, what do you guys think? Has it been a good fix? I haven't really given it a chance myself yet, but um, I'd be curious to see what you think about it. Dynamike says, I see how it is. Everyone going to gang up on the most handsome guy. You caught us, man. You caught us. You caught us. We uh, we definitely had to team up on you there. So Percy the Pigeon still showing his tenacity here. After watching t times two speed, the whole video turn sounds like he's talking so slow. Man, you watch on times two speed. That's pretty intense. Yeah, for Total War, I understand that. The pacing can be kind of slow at times. So I can totally understand that. I, I watch things fast forwarded to some RTS games every now and then. Yeah, especially Total War. Like I'll fast forward through a lot of the early stages. But for newer players, you know, I would imagine they watch more. The beta is a flat plus in your eyes. It's much better, but not quite there. Okay. So that's coming from uh, two mighty ODM champions, Anticity and Loopy. And yes, the mighty Pigeon Master continuing to, to chase and troll here. Although he doesn't really have much of a chance. He's just... Like, Lewin can't beat the, the guards here. He can't he can't beat the Winterheart guard. Like, there's, there's like no chance. He's just getting shot. Honestly, the Great Stag could charge too, but that's a little bit risky, I guess. But I do not think there is much hope for the mighty Percy the Pigeon. Looks like the antlers have been couched and they are going to be jumping in there. Lewin does get attacked and kind of gets back up in the sky there. Winterheart Guard need to pile in. They should be able to do the trick. Lewin, there's no way. They're unbreakable spears. They're just going to kill Lewin. Yeah. Could stay the course. Here come the spears. <laughs> Percy really giving us a, a good a good old classic laddering. This is like classic like Warhammer 1 laddering shit. Like all you have is the Lord and you're just like constantly cycle charging for like 30 minutes. Yeah, it's pretty funny. That was very, very common in Warhammer 1 ladder. Warhammer 1 was like the Dark Ages. It was like before humanity learned how to like, you know... Before we had enlightenment, you know? Like, most of those Warhammer 1 tournaments, like, were pretty wild. At least the ones that I saw. All right, here he comes again. Percy the Pigeon flying overhead. I'm not sure where he's going to go. Maybe after the Deepwood Scouts. Hard to say. We got Spears moving in. Come on, Percy. Just just fight it to the end. There's there's You have zero chance of winning this. Your score is too low. You, you just gotta you just gotta battle him to the end give him an honorable duel Percy redeem yourself now if you're listening this is your chance I think there's like nothing else yeah just a couple drives over there what else just need to gather their forces and then Percy will have to attack Torox does love Wheaties. he does kind of say that doesn't he speaking of like overpowered campaigns and shit yeah no we're gonna do the next FFA is gonna be campaign stuff it's gonna be before Prometheus gave us fire Warhammer one yeah <laughs> yeah all right, Lewin is in the pit of combat now. The Wardens of Sithril are here. They're also anti-large, and they hit like trucks. So Lewin should get dunked on pretty bad here by the Wardens. Yeah, he's taking a lot of damage. He might try and get away. I'm not sure. He's going in. Oh, my God. Spirit Leech Fam was the worst bullshit in the world in game one. Oh, my God. It was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Percy, Percy sacrificing himself to the Spears, which is good. He had no chance of winning, so it was kind of pointless to keep grinding on there. How much HP does he have? About 800. Wardens of Sithril, of course. The uh, ROR uh, Wildwood Rangers. Really, really cool scheme, actually. But they uh, they claim victory. 
All right, so campaign units, it's time. So we're gonna get several new players in here. We'll do one more FFA to close things out. And this one is going to be the old, uh, the old uh, campaign unit action. Yes, Volkmare the Grim, he might appear. GG, well played. See you guys next time. We're gonna do Troll Country. So let's clear these spaces for new players. This is a pleasure having you guys here. So now it's time to take off unit caps and you guys can use campaign units. So whatever witchcraft you'd like to use, go for it. I'm gonna play Empire because they have a lot of fun campaign units to bring. Back when Accusation Spirit Leech, yeah, no, absolutely. All right, yeah, Accusation Spirit Leech was so fun with Gelt. Cyrus, dude, no worries, man, you did fine. Okay, we got Trogdor the Flatulent, Particular, and Sneaky Snake. Okay, guys, can use campaign units. Treat yourselves. Let's see what people play. When they're given access to campaign units, I'm, I'm curious what they're gonna use. So I will pull up a blocker because we have to have some, some you know, hype, a little bit of a, you know, anticipation for what's to come. You have to build it up. Ooh, campaign units for the empire. What do I have? I have the Knights of Moor. I have the Stubborn Bulls. Uh, I have the Cariber Greatswords. It's going to be crazy. Mm, choices, choices. Yeah, look, look, we have a tour of rest already. Yeah, we have a tour of rest. I love it. Okay, this is this is getting real. Cyrus, you did great, man. Hold your head up high. Don't don't stress it, dude. So we got Trogdor the Flashlone Dwarves. We could we're gonna see some blessed dinosaurs here. So let's go for like a Sigmar build. Just like a super Sigmarite build. Yeah, like a crusade. What do these guys do? Melee attack to nearby units? Okay. It's fine. The Church of Sigmar rolling out in force today. Uh, let's go ahead and get this thing. Oh my god. I'm going all in on the, the campaign memes for you. What are these guys? They have stock? Okay. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Shit, okay. So I got a fair amount of campaign units. I didn't get them all, but I, I do have some. And then aside from that, we need to get a caster. Damn. Okay, let's get you. My build isn't going to be like mega competitive, but it should be fine, honestly. That's, that's good. You have you. This is actually pretty fun. Um, yeah, that's that's a front line for sure. Get a couple of you guys, and uh, if we can get a single spear more, we'll be fine. All right. So the battle is upon us. Volkmar the Grim going to be leading some uh, some cool troops. The special steam tank is called the Emperor's Wrath steam tank, yeah. It's pretty good. It has uh, it has like an AoE fire explosion, and it also has the emergency vent, so it can like do some some cool damage. Disabled if the unit... Oh, when it blows up. Oh, man. So when the Emperor's Wrath steam tank blows up, it actually does a shit ton of damage. Okay. And it has emergency vent, which is like AoE fire damage, yeah. I also have the Karaburg Greatswords. Um, I've gotten the Gunderman's Surefires, and I think that's it. Stubborn Bulls could actually be very good here. Although, eh, I can't afford them all. The Stubborn Bulls are like great weapon. You know what? Screw it. I, I, I gotta I gotta do this. It's gonna be fun. Okay. I got the Stubborn Bulls also. We got we got all the goodies. They're basically like Empire like questing knights. Yeah. I'll show you when we get in there. Dwarf campaign units, they uh I don't know what they have. I don't know what Trogdor is doing. Maybe they have like ghostly units, like the like Clan Angren stuff. Hunts Marshall's expedition has Dowie copters. Oh shit. Okay. Well, let me go get some water real quick, guys, and we'll we'll start as soon as soon as everybody's ready here. All right, I'm back. Let's get this party started. Uh, looks like Particular's fine-tuning the army. He has 
Sneaky Snake is going to have a really good army because he can bring like the Knights of Torgival and he can bring like the Mistwalker units. So that's going to be probably the scariest. Marcus has gyros and all the campaign units. God, maybe I should go Marcus then. Do you guys want me to go Marcus instead? Ah, eh, whatever. You know, this is fine. This is fine. We can do it next time too. The dwarves get an unbreakable Carnosaur. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they get the one from uh, Thoric's, uh, Thoric Ironbrow's campaign. Yeah, shit. Okay, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool indeed. Well, here we are, my friends. Sutson's Mortar is good. No friendly fire. Yeah, I didn't want to go with a mortar. Okay. So we're definitely going to ignore the dwarves, as, as is the tradition in FFAs. Here we are. You guys are going to like my army. I brought most of the coolest ROR's. I didn't manage to get them all, but like we're, we're doing pretty good there. Yeah. Loading in. We'll see who our neighbors are. That's the first thing you usually want to assess in FFAs is uh, where your friends and foes are. Stagnites? I like Stagnites. I think they're a very cool unit. I really do like the Stagnites. Speaking of flying taco, I was meaning to ask you, man, are you going to be playing Age of Empires 4 when that comes out? I feel like your RTS skills would transition well to that. We're going to be having a faction war for Age of Empires 4 when it launches because there will be eight factions, so we'll have a champion for each one. I'm going to be probably playing either... I'm going to play in it because, you know, I want to play, so... Either the Holy Roman Empire or the Rus. Those are the two factions that I'm really, really excited for. The Russ, I watched uh, Relic actually released some gameplay of them, and they're really cool. Like their bounty system, where they can like get bounty for hunting like deer camps, and uh, also they can build like wooden fortresses and wooden palisades instead of stone walls, and they're actually really durable. But they can't like put people on top of them. Yeah, really neat faction. They have mounted priests, they have streltsy, um, horse archers, a lot of cool shit. Willow, it, it sadly it is the tradition, man. It is the tradition. Hopefully nobody disconnects here. Yeah. Yeah, Thoric sub-faction has the Ghost Boy also. It's got Hans. Yeah, Hans is the ghostly character. Come on, guys. Somebody's potatoes trying. This is this is the epic FFA that everyone's excited for. We gotta we gotta make this happen here. Yeah, so we'll have a faction war on the launch weekend, whenever like late October when that launches, we'll have a faction war for uh, Age of Empires 4. And uh, we'll do all kinds of cool stuff. <clears throat> yeah gonna be great who else has really good campaign units yeah for sure for sure the uh yeah abbasid is really fun too i like them a lot like abbasid is like the ultimate sim city faction because like you get bonuses for connecting your cities like through the grid like you go through the various golden ages and honestly abbasid's pretty good late game because a lot of people like to go camp or uh, horses or cavalry late game and uh the camel riders just dunk on horses like they lower their damage they do a ton of damage against them which is really neat Okay, it looks like we might have connected. Somebody's potato might have struggled. I'm not sure. All right, who has the potato? Who is it? They're trying so hard to connect. Yeah. That's right, Tomb Kings have a couple, don't they? They have the Assyrians and... Okay, hopefully once we get into the game, it, it won't be like lagging and stuff. Okay, moving. Oh my god, the snow is even lagging. I might have to just restart. Which is fine. Uh, I used to play StarCraft a lot. Okay. Doesn't seem too bad now. Okay, I think I think their potato survived. So we have two of the Caribou Greatswords. If you guys haven't seen these, they are the campaign uh, unique Greatsword units. They look really badass. And they also are just better. And they have the bathed in blood. So basically they give melee attack and leadership to nearby units. Which doesn't really matter since we went with like a faith army, which is mostly unbreakable anyways. Now, something else that we have going is going to be the uh, double handgunners. We have the Gunderman's Surefires, which actually have stock also. So we have two stocking handgunner units with the Empire, which is really, really, really neat. Steam tank here. The Emperor's Wrath. We got Volkmar the Grim in the front. He's going to be leading the Crusade. We got some spears in the back. And uh, last but not least, we have the Stubborn Bulls, which we'll show you in just a second. So two, and here they are. So these are the Empire, like, Knightly Order unit. Dude, look how goddamn cool these guys are. Oh, I wish the Empire had these in multiplayer. God, that'd be neat. That'd be so good and tasty. Oh, yeah. Look at that, dude. Yep, and that's it. 
I didn't get the grenades. No, I didn't. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Okay, so let's go ahead and scout out our opponents. It looks like there's a mass... Oh, God. Oh, God. Where are the Shadow Walkers? So we're going to move this way because... Oh, no, the dwarves are already being attacked. So maybe it's over there. What is going on? Oh, the elves are behind the dwarves. Okay, so we can just go fight the lizards. It's fine. Let's get out into the middle of the map. And then get you guys here. The one token spear unit, yes. So, look. Oh my god, the Knights of Torque of All are behind the dwarves. Look. Holy shit, those things hit hard. 300 weapons, rank the pop. I feel like they're going to get wrecked, though. This Vanguard. Whoa, how do they... Wait, how do they get so close? Oh, man, their flags are so similar. So the Spire Guard of Tor of Rest are the Unbreakable Lothern Sea Guard. Oh my god, that's so funny. Just the, the dreaded Vanguard on the dwarves here. So what are these? These are Feral Cold ones. Uh, we got Blessed Saurus in the front. Oh, that's going to be fun. Backed up by Blessed Bastilodons, Temple Guard. Uh, Blessed Stegodons. Oh, god. That is a meaty armor. Armor. Army. And armor, I guess. So Feral Cold ones. Go ahead and get our knights. We could just charge into them and get the free gold if they want to. The dwarves and the uh, elves are having a pretty epic duel of sorts. I did not know white lines had... How do they d deploy back there even? Anyways, let's see if we can catch these, these clever girls. They're not very quick, so... Apparently they're not the most clever of girls. The steam tank is going to start blasting here in a second. So we'll just kind of get it to start shooting downtown at Blessed Sars. We don't quite catch the clever girls. Looks like they're able to get away. Let's keep moving our army up, like so. Oh, kind of screwed up there a little bit. All right, let's charge the clever girls again, see if they're paying attention. Oh, the dwarves vanguarded them. Okay, that's why I was getting confused. Yeah. Oh, man, nasty solar engine damage. Oh, my God, that did so much. Those blessed solar engines do not mess about. Uh, let's go ahead and get our cavalry to go get those skinks back there. It's not going to be great, but... My caster got a little bit caught. It's fine. Let's go ahead and get the two hand gunners to just blast them into the Shadow Realm. We can use an Earth Flood if we have to. And yeah, those clever girls are going to get just mowed down here. Perfect. Yep. Let's go back there on the skinks. Source Warrior's taking a little bit of work. Honestly, I feel like this isn't going to go great for me. All right, Bastilladon. Bastilladon. We broke them. We have our Karaburg's great swords in the front of Volkmar the Grim stands ready. And we have been able to get back here on these guys. Let's go ahead and start shooting at the uh, Bastilladon with the solar engine. Pull the spears back. Hand gunners. Hand gunners. And, uh, yeah, I guess just pile in and fight, dudes. Let's go, let's go. Volkmar, get in there. Caribou Greatswords can kind of stay a little bit more defensive. Yes, yeah, so we got good handgunner fire. Volkmar is going to be buffing him up. So the Caribou Greatswords should do some good work. Flagellants are just going to tie these guys down. And, oh, man. Okay, I'm being attacked by the elves in the back. Ouch, this is going to hurt. This is not going to be good. I could turn and shoot them. That's a little bit scary, though. Caribou Greatswords are quite dominant. Let's go ahead and try and get some points off the Knights of Torgval. Pull you back, get some spears up, and the steam tank can even start blasting them as well. Let's pull back, just tighten it up, because now we're being put into dangerous territory for sure. Uh, banishment on those guys would be good. Okay, so we're getting some shots. Yeah, we're Knights of Torgaval are taking some work. The knights back here have done some good damage. And, oh my god, I just totally missed this. Wow. Just the gooning on my caster. The gooning of goonings. Well, you know what? We don't need healing anyways. We're just going to finish off those those Knights of Torgaval. Let's get the knights moving in. We are getting a lot of points. Our caster is down. We got the Great Eagle down. Let's go ahead and get those Knights of Torgaval if we can. Let's just keep shooting him. Keep shooting here. And maybe that caster will come back. That was so sloppy. Did I get the regrowth off? I did, which is nice. So at least that happened. My caster might actually come back. Yeah, my infantry are holding well. Volkmar needs to go get busy, though. He needs to go help them out. Come on, caster. Come back. All right, caster's back. Thankfully, I got the heal off. And uh, I think we're okay. All right, so great swords holding pretty valiantly in the front line. The points have been given to us by the birds. Steam tank can now move in and try and get some terror routes. Although I think Blessed Sorcerer, and they have perfect vigor. That's some scary shit. I was dropping Earth Blood here in the front. Volkmar, I thought I gave him an order to get in there. I don't know why he's not piling in. Very strange. All right, hand gunners are opening up onto the solar engine. Dwarves are now advancing in. The Slanesh bots are here. Oh, lovely, classic. How are the Caribou Greatswords doing? Pretty damn good, actually. Pretty decisive victories in their fights. Let's pull into uh, reserves here. Steam Tank can start shooting into you. And Volkmar might be able to help them win this fight. All right, dropping Soulfire Bombardment. Saving for regrowth at this point. And it looks like our Great Weapon Cavalry have done the trick. So let's pull them back to our army now. They've, they've been hunting skinks for long enough. Lord Chungus is here. One of the solar engines is down for the count. Should be out of the picture. That is Toilet Seat Mazda Mundi. So now we can go after the Bastilladon. We don't need to really do much against Toilet Seat Mazda. Let's form ranks. Steam Tank. 
start shooting here. Volkmar the Grim doing the work of Sigmar, and our uh, our questing knights can come around the back here. Good. Sigmar sons form up here. Dwarves are approaching us. A little bit concerning. Let's drop the hammer of Sigmar. Get those great swords in there. Hammer them down. God damn. Spam calls all day, man. All day. I love having two units of stocking handgunners. They're just getting so much value from me. Man, the dwarves got a lot of value, though. It's pretty scary. All right, let's get some down the pipe shots on these guys. Uh, let's also drop an earth blood here. Heal up some of the great swords. Are Caribou great swords unbreakable? Oh, they are. Hell yeah. So goddamn cool. All right, form up handgunners. Uh, Blessed Stegadon is a lot of points, but I feel like I need to start like putting some respect in the dwarf's name. Let's bring it over here and use like the big steam release. We got a banishment of the gods. Ooh, that's going to be a good banishment, potentially. All right. Come on, tank. Get away from the dwarves. The dwarves are uh, an ornery folk. Let's go ahead and send the Sigmar Sons in. Huge banishment. Huge, huge, huge banishment right there. And the guns are reforming. Let's get spears to protect them. Is there any trolls in the back that could come for me? Questing Knights can come back here and probably probably do some work. Come on, Steam Tank, Sigmar Sons. You guys just be sacrificed for Sigmar. You know how it goes. All right, let's check out the Emperor's Wrath Steam Tank ability. Two handgunners can just start blasting into you. And here we are. All right. Oh, check this out. Oh, yeah. Look at the big steam damage it did there. Oh, that was cool. I don't actually know how much damage it did, but it looked really cool. So let's get our Great Weapon Cavalry pushing in. It looks like we have pulled ahead on points. Dwarves are definitely threatening. But um, let's go ahead and get the Great Swords to disengage there. Shield of Faith. Ooh, look at our Empire Great Weapon units. That is so unusual to have. Um, let's get our handguns up on the hill here. We can start shooting at the Norgunlings Ironbreakers. We have regrowths. Uh, let's go ahead and pop that on the tank. So I think Volkmar should be fine. He's pretty pretty resilient. And the steam tank can go ahead and start shooting into the big dino, and we'll get our, our little Harry Potter to go chase these guys off. All right, perfect. Great swords, pile in, pile in. Let's get the spears to move in as well. Start shooting Norgunlings Ironbreakers with our two handguns. And chase you off the battlefield if we can. Cool. All right, that is a Dwarven army for sure. Dude, the Caribou Greatswords are so metal. Just unbreakable, just badass Sigmarites. Yeah, with their floppy hats just representing. There still is, uh, Tor of Rest is still flying around. The Sneaky Snake is, is cackling in the shadows. Looks like uh, we should be able to get these dinos off. We need to chase them. Don't let them come back, man. How are the Caribou Greatswords doing? So Steam Tank has done its job. Um, now it's time to get the Steam Tank engaged in melee. We need to just get this thing, like... Yeah, we have regrowths for it, which is really nice. We'll save up for the regrowth. We have escorted them off the battlefields. Let's go ahead and get this one now if we can. Troops have been escorted. And the cavalry might be able to get into the back of these Bugman's Rangers. Although, maybe using them to chase the shit down is going to be better. Eh, you know, let's just go there. Man, they have a lot of the, the throwing weapon dwarves, too. So we need to keep juking, effectively. We've almost got Norgulmings down. Let's go ahead and pull back. Oh, man, so much damage. We have enough for a regrowth? We do. Let's pop it. Let's go ahead and juke this way. Volkmar is taking a little bit of damage. Ooh, those are Temple Guard. We don't want any of that. Oh, the Spire Guard are there too. Let's go see what kind of AoE damage this can do. Caribou Greatswords basically fighting to the last. Yeah, we can have you guys fight here. Summon the Emperor's Wrath Steam Tank! Oh god, get in there! Let's get the handguns back on the high ground. Volkmar is needed here. He's still has some health too. He's still a player. All right. Exhaust the, the emergency vents. Didn't do that much damage, but it certainly sends a message. Oh, man, those throwing weapons there. They're going to kill my tank. That's so much damage, those throwing axes. Yeah, we need to get on them. Shit. All right, shoot. And shoot. Tank, get over there. Shut them down. Just keep... Now, Bugman's Rangers are actually pretty good in combat. Oh! Volkmar is getting owned by these... These Spire Guard of Tor of Res. I don't have an Earth Blighter for him. Ah! 200 HP. Okay. We got a lot of those Dwarven troops down. Spearmen, move in. Volkmar, live! We need him for the late game. Him and the Steam Tank need to get a heal, like, stat. Okay. Got a Lord. Our guns are almost out of ammo. Oh, Volkmar has fallen! Hot, steamy overload. I know, that's basically what it is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, could we stabilize here? Maybe we just pull away? Try and get our, our, our Steam Tank blasting from downtown. Let let the elves and lizards and all of them fight. We're ahead on points, but honestly, the dwarves could catch us. So it's most important that we stop the dwarves. Okay, so let's get, like, alongside these guys. Hey, Jay Jackson, thank you for the donation. Thanks for the stream turn. 
Uh, have you thought about holding a tournament where a player gets to choose their opponent's comp? I've thought about it, but it would just be all... I don't know how fun that'd be to watch. I don't know. I have thought about that format, though. Thank you for the donation, man. Ooh, right down the pipe on the Iron Breakers. Yeah, that's the shit right there. Uh, Jade Wizard's back. That's quite clutch. That means we can potentially save up enough to heal the tank again. The Gunderman sure fires. How'd they do this game? Ooh, 2800 value. How's the Emperor's Wrath Steam Tank doing? 25, not bad. Yeah, not bad. Volkmar tried. He, he got pretty far, but in the end it didn't matter. We have one, like two Caribou Greatswords going. They probably got such good value. Yeah, only 1200 actually. Uh-huh. Dwarves are rallying back here. Blast and Charge is coming in. Nasty, nasty. You know what? I don't want to shoot these guys, but I think we just we just do it to deny points. Come on, Surefires! Let's get the Steam Tank in there and melee. Surefire should be able to stop these Dwarves from coming back. Good. Good. They're all broken. Now the Steam Tank will get in. Uh, is it good for his armor? Oh, it actually says it's good against armor. That's nice. Ooh, and Silver Bullets have come back too. That's quite nice. A couple little volleys here and there. Oh, okay. We need to go get these lizards. Oh, man. My Jade Wizard got... Oh, the damn skinks got me. The damn skinks got me. Son of a gun. All right. We're out of ammo. How good are these guys in combat? Wow. 31 melee attack on the Gunnerman Surefires. That's pretty respectable. Keep the steam tank coming after him. Dwarves probably got this. Like, I, I have to give my points to someone else, I think. Yeah. Okay. We got the Shatter. So now let's start blasting the Bugman's Rangers from downtown. The Knights of Torgaval are coming. We need to like save our silver bullets to like shoot them a little bit. Yeah, let's just rip that shot while we're here. I gotta get more of a lead, you know? Because I'm gonna give up some points for my steam tank. Oh god, the Knights of Torgaval. Oh man, they're coming for my tank, aren't they? No. No, not the steam tank. I have so much ammo left. Fire, reload, fire. Oh god, sneaky snake. Get out of here with that shit. Okay. They're shaking. Come on, Emperor's Wrath Steam Tank. Hold. Okay. Defense. Have you guys attack. Attack. No. Okay. Okay. Pull away. Pull away. Come on. Come on. Drag them through the mud. Oh, he, he got a bunch of damage on me. We got to like just like drift super tight. 119. No. No. Bad Knights of Torgaval. <laughs> Bad. Shit, there goes my chance of winning. I think he just karate chopped me, guys. Because now I just have these haggard spears, which I guess giving points to the elf is better because it denies points to the... You know what? In, in a way, this is actually helping me, I guess. Like, there is some silver lining because at least uh, the dwarves aren't going to get the points for killing my shit. Because the elves have no chance. Oh, my God. The meme tank. Dude, Knights of Torgaval went ape shit. God damn, these guys are beastly. Uh, imagine, just give these to High Elves in multiplayer, and then then people would be happy. Yeah, like, why can't High Elves have those in multiplayer, guys? Why not? You know? Like, shit. So, the dwarves have cornered the Spire Guard of Tor of Rest. I'm ahead by, like, a couple thousand points, not that much. I think the dwarves got it, honestly, because they're going to get so many points from these uh, Spire Guard here, which are unbreakable, so they're going to fight to the last man and giving all the points up. I think Trogdor the Flatulent has got this one. Yeah, Trogdor's Mighty Dowie Legion, which brought no campaign units, uh, in the end, is going to be surviving. He must have gotten a pretty good fight in the beginning against the, the Elves. Yeah, I think he got a lot of points from those guys, and from me too. Temple Guard are wavering. The Dwarves are holding firm. The Spire Guard of Tor of Rests are on their way back. The Meme Tank was great. It was good. It looks like Belagar is broken. I think it was Belagar. Oh, it's just a Dwarf Lord, actually. Dude, the Spire Guard are holding their own. Look at these guys. I guess their stats aren't bad. Let's see what they got here. 74, 1800 values. I, I like how they're like ripping shots in the back row while the front row is fighting. I really like when that happens. Yeah, sorry guys. The Emperor's Wrath Steam Tank tried. It's probably got close to 3000 value. We, we I think we would have won if, if it hadn't been killed. Because we could have probably gotten a fair amount more points. Oh, we're still in it somehow. That's weird. Are we going to be like last man standing somehow? All right, let's move these guys up. Come, fight my fight my minions, dude. The, the spire, the knights of Torgaval. Honestly, this dwarven army might lose here. Okay, okay. Now this is where things get interesting. Let's just go chill in the trees until we can walk too to save vigor, and we we just hope that the dwarves lose this. Cause spire guard plus 
Yeah, it's only one Spire Guard left. There's only three in a unit, so it's still, it's DPS is pretty good. Yeah, there's like Bugman's Rangers full health over here as well. Yeah, I think, I think Blasting Charge is for sure were a factor. He probably Blasting Charged the Elf Army. Bugman's Rangers gonna get attacked by the, the Knight of Torque of All. This one model has like 2,000 HP. That's so crazy. Ammo is pretty bare bones. Yep, they're running out of models. 15, 16. He gets in there. Let's see what kind of damage this thing does. Yeah, I mean, it's basically like a like a lord, you know? Can bring our units over here. Let's come do battle. Ah, oh, the Spire Guard's getting worn down. There's too many angry dwarves. They're doing, like, quick battles and shit. Or, or, man, I don't know why I said quick battles. I really need to get some food. Karate kicks. Yes. Yeah, Norska has some units, too. That would be nice. Because Norska, again, is another faction that, like, could use some new shit, right? But they're just, like, in the potato realm. 100% Trogdor's got this. My Lord Shattered, he's taking the Slayer Oath, says Trogdor. <laughs> Sneaky Snake trying to get around with the, the mighty uh, Knights of Torgival. Yeah, you see, give him, give Norska something OP. You know, I feel bad for him, man. Oh, you gotta kill the Spire Guard or else the game won't end. You gotta kill the Spire Guard, dude. There's only two of them. Oh, no. Look, I'm now the new focus. How do the Spears do this game? Eh, 187. Sure, Fire's got almost 3,000 value. Pretty cool. Like, I feel like there's some campaign units that wouldn't be OP in multiplayer. Like, that could be reasonably balanced, depending on the cost and things like that. There are some that are probably pretty broken, or at least would change the meta pretty drastically, but... All right, let's move over here. Oh, yeah, the dwarves have, like, mass rangers, so I can't see their shit. That's right. Yeah, it's, it, the Iceforged Legion is three Chaos Cannons, but you have to pay for it. It's not like, uh, it's not like free. Knights of Torque of All going to tear out my entire army before uh, before we get down here, but let's see if we can get a little bit of damage on the Bugman's Rangers. Charge for Sigmar! There's like lizards, just all sorts of shit in here. Knights of Torque of All getting down. My army instantly breaks, and uh, that should be a shatter here in a moment, which will end it for me. And now the Knights of Torque of All are here, and there's a wild-ass Spire Guard of Tor of Rest, which has pretty good range at 180, actually, hiding in the trees. We can get like a cinematic shot of these these two mighty champions we did have a tournament on the channel a while back which was um campaign exclusive units were allowed it was really fun the most op one was the knights of kalidor because they just get all these like broken ass dragons that shit was wild as hell would you guys like to see that again a campaign like unit army so like ogres like campaign units like all that shit the problem is some factions just don't have good ones or any at all really like what did beastman get did beastman get anything Chaos gets nothing, so nobody plays Chaos. Beastmen, like, yeah, there's just some factions that just don't get any love. So, this appears to be the end of the road, although my units have come back again from their great conquest. They're too brave for their own good. Oh, yeah. The fight of fights. The War of Vengeance, round two. All right, looks like that's been settled. We know how that one went. Ironbreaker steamrolling the elves there. Oh, there's still one left! Get him! Come on, fight dwarves! All right, we'll do we'll do a campaign exclusive tournament soon. Norska is actually fun in that because you can bring the haggard iceforged legion. All right, we'll do that soon. You guys you guys seem hyped for it. No, the OP dragons are are, are, all, are all part of the fun. Remember El Gordo, the dreaded dragon? Yeah, he was he was a terror. GG, well played. The dwarves will be the champions. Trogdor, a mighty reference taking me back to 2002, is going to be winning today's game. Here in the FFA round two. Ooh, a campaign unit on uh, on Sunday. Okay, Anticity, that's cool. I'm gonna be out of town, unfortunately. But that's that's pretty fun. So GG to these fine champions. GG, well played. The final duel in front of Mazda's throne, yes. That was that was a really fun match. Trogdor, Trogdor handled business. Now let's evaluate this. So Beastmen get Ogres. Okay, you just get Ogres, really. Which is, I mean, that's kind of cool. You could still... Ogres. I think Bretonia doesn't get anything either. Bretonia just gets Ogres. Dark Elves get something? No, Dark Elves get Ogres only. Dwarves get Ogres. Yeah, I mean, I guess Ogres adds a little bit of spice. Empire is definitely a fun one because they have a lot of cool units. Like the campaign Elector Count units. Greenskins get access to... Yeah, Spider Hatchlings are really good. They get Super Squigs, sp Lava Spider Riders, they get uh, Armored Squig Hoppers, they get Feral Wyverns. Yeah, like, they're really fun. Greenskins campaign exclusive units are uh, pretty great. High Elves get access. Uh, yeah, you could actually bring Alistair, the Hand of the Shadow Crown, Gate Guard, 
But you would just go Tor of Rest if you were playing them. Norska gets, ooh, Azric the Maze Keeper. That's pretty cool. You get like Buna and like Final Transmutation. That, that's a neat. So another great, great something or other. Kihar the Tormentor. So he's really expensive units. Fireball and Shadows. Yeah, Anticity. Let me know, man. Let me know how it's going to go. The Great Maherd of the Blood Fjord. Oh, look at that guy. Oh. Wait, why, why is this weapon strength so low? 130? What the hell is this? Why is its weapon strength 130? Oh, there's four of them! Oh, that's rad! So it's like mini mammoths. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. So Norska's got some cool shit. Skaven definitely are awesome. You can take like these ROR, like death dealers, eye takers. They have like flares. Lizardmen have all the blessed units. Tomb Kings have their uh, their crafting units. Usirian, Storm Riders, they got the Carrion, they have the Knights. Vampire Counts can bring Sylvanian units, which is kind of funny. You could also just bring Krell as a regular unit. So you could bring like a Vampire Count player could just like roll up with like handgunners and Krell. Like you could bring like, you could bring double Krell, which I would allow. <laughs> they would have to follow like banner rules still, but yeah, that'd be pretty funny. Warriors of Chaos get nothing. They just get shit ass ogres. Okay, let's see. What else? Yeah, unfortunately, they don't get much. I think if you go with... Does, do Heralds of Ariel have anything? Like Campaign-wise? No, it doesn't really... Oh, oh, they do. Oh! Heralds of Ariel. You can actually bring the Sister's Dragon as a companion. So you could go with them on the bird and then bring the dragon. Or you could go double dragon, which is pretty funny. But yeah. Now, if you guys want to see the most OP shit, this is it. This is the, uh, the Knights of Kalidor. So you can bring Imrath the Eternal... Sh Sir Sh shock a lot the calamity. He likes big butts and you cannot lie. Um, you got Lamaro the frozen breath, which has like a speed aura. You have Brew Roar the protector of life, which he does like poison. And then you have uh, Gor El Gordo, who I think was a favorite because this is a dragon that has uh, rebirth. So the dragon actually comes back to life. It's really really good. Yeah, Draika has some sub faction units. Wargrove, yeah, she's got ooh the malevolent units. That's fun and giant spiders and. Oh, yeah, guys. We're definitely going to do this soon. This is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. So we'll do some fun stuff. All right, guys. That's going to be it for today. Thank you for joining. We will, uh, yeah, we'll check the expedition real quick before we go. So that is going to be the Hunts Marshals expedition. Yeah. Oh, Hunts Marshals can bring all these Jorek, Kalara, Hertwig, Von Hall, and they all have, like, their unique abilities and shit. Oh, Affects allies in range. 30 melee defense and unbreakable. Oh, hell yeah. And they have gyros. This will be really fun. All right, guys. Stay tuned for that tournament. Thank you all for joining. Congratulations to Super Team 1, today's winners. And thank you guys all so much for the generous donations today. You guys went apeshit. So uh, thank you so much to... Let me go ahead and pull it up. Jay Jackson, Cyrus Bow, Justicar, Akrist, Davy Jones, Brown uh, Kramer. Let's see what else... D Willow, thank you for the fat hundred dollar. And Alexander, thank you for the honey as well. You guys just murdered it today. Thank you. Don Toto, Green Maws, and Schmandolf. That's it for now. You guys take care of yourselves. I'm gonna go uh take it easy, get some food. We'll be back with the tournament maybe tomorrow. I'm not sure. There might be one tomorrow, but tomorrow might be my day off. We'll see. All right, take care of yourselves. See you on the other side, and that is it.